morning, everyone. I'm Vasily Varlamo. Strong inversion impacting visibility around the Treasure Valley this morning. I'll, you know, I'll let you know when that should clear up in just a bit. Good morning. I'm Ashley Carter. And coming up on CBS 2 News this morning, the fight for the 2024 GOP nomination is set to begin in just a few weeks now. Who's expected to take on Joe Biden this November? Good morning. I'm Sarah Jacobson. Coming up this morning, lawmakers headed back to Capitol Hill. How much time they have to decide before our government will run out of funding. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. Good morning. Thank you for waking up with us. You're taking a live look at Indian Creek Plaza on this Tuesday morning. We're kicking off January 2nd, 2024. Vasily Varlamos will have your weather in just a bit. But first, new this morning, we could get access to court documents involving Jeffrey Epstein and some other big names any day now. There are hundreds of sealed court filings involving the late financier and accused sex offender. The documents coming from a 2015 civil suit over allegations that Epstein's companion, socialite Ghislaine Maxwell, facilitated the abuse of an alleged traffic victim. The judge ordering the unsealing to start as of January 1st. A U.S. District Judge ruling last month that there was no legal justification to keep prominent names in that record private. The death toll from Japan's powerful earthquakes has now risen to 48. Japanese officials say a magnitude 7.6 quake hit the coast of central Japan yesterday afternoon. Water, power and cell service still down in some areas. Aftershocks continuing in the region after the initial quake and officials say there have been more than 100 aftershocks since that initial quake. Well, the FBI investigating a fatal crash out in Rochester, New York. That crash happening outside the Kodak Center that's in Rochester after a New Year's Eve concert just after midnight back on Monday. Police say two vehicles collided and hit a crowd of people. Two people are dead, five others hurt. Rochester's police chief saying investigators found at least a dozen gasoline canisters both in and around the vehicle that hit the other. An arson team also investigating the incident. Well, despite the GOP race for 2024 not even really getting started yet, many seem to believe the battle may already be over. Now, one governor saying he thinks it's clear which Republican presidential candidates will make the move forward. This is a two-person race, right? It's between Trump and Nikki Haley. Everybody understands that. He knows his voters who want to see Trump defeated are all coming over to Nikki Haley. Governor Chris Sununu referring to Chris Christie's efforts to stay on as a candidate. Vivek Ramaswamy, Asa Hutchinson and Ron DeSantis also still in the race. Governor Sununu recently endorsing Nikki Haley for president. Well, meantime, Trump still has a strong lead in those polls. The first voting set to take place come the Iowa caucuses in two weeks. Many Americans expected a Trump versus Biden rematch, but campaigning this year could be complicated. President Biden beginning the year still facing that potential impeachment if Republicans have their way, along with his son being criminally charged in federal tax cases. Our Biden is not, of course, is of course not running for office, but in presidential politics, optics can matter. And Donald Trump already twice impeached himself. He's embroiled in a series of legal and civil cases, spanning accusations of deceptive business practices to insurrection. Whether it is a court that determines he's unfit to hold office because he took up uh, force against our uh, Constitution or because the electorate throws him out, uh, I don't think it really matters if he's unfit to hold office. Now for Trump, the calendar crowded with court hearings. There's a scheduled court hearing for his defamation claims the day after the Iowa caucus, a marketing scam trial the week after New Hampshire votes, and the federal criminal trial surrounding his efforts to overturn the 2020 election, happening the day ahead of Super Tuesday, and much more taking place both before and after the Republican nominating convention. In the meantime, the president trying to get back on the primary ballots in some states. The former president, Donald Trump's legal team, expecting to appeal that decision that removed him from the 2024 primary ballot in Colorado, as well as Maine, as soon as later today. Colorado's Secretary of State saying she plans to follow the Supreme Court's decision on the matter. But of course, we'll await to see what the U.S. Supreme Court says. And of course, I will follow whatever order is in place throughout the election. Colorado's elections are the best in the nation, and we think we'll have a great election regardless of what happens. The decisions to take Trump off the ballot based on the 14th Amendment, which says officials have, quote, engaged in insurrection, are disqualified from holding office. 
Meantime, whoever does take the White House in 2024 already has quite a bit on their plate to deal with. The war in the Middle East impacting countries across the globe as efforts from rebels in Yemen impact a major trade route. White House officials say they're not trying to create a bigger conflict in the Middle East after the U.S. military recently shot down three rebel ships. According to U.S. Central Command, the Iranian-backed militant group fired at U.S. helicopters while attempting to board a container ship. The helicopters fired back in what officials call self-defense. The Houthis say they are targeting ships along the trade route in response to the war in Gaza, stoking fears that the war could develop into a larger regional conflict. It comes as the war in the Middle East seems to be slowing down. Israel pulling thousands of troops out of the Gaza Strip, possibly setting the stage for a scaled back offensive that could last for much of 2024. The Gaza Health Ministry says almost 22,000 Palestinians have been killed since the war started back in October. Stay tuned. We'll take a closer look at the war in the Middle East coming up in just a bit. Well, it comes as more international conflict seems to be popping up. South Korea's opposition leader has been stabbed in the neck. Now, South Korean officials saying opposition party leader Lee Jae-myung was stabbed during a sit visit to the city of Busan earlier this morning. He was talking to reporters when he was attacked. Police saying the attacker approached Lee, saying he wanted to get an autograph before stabbing him in the neck. Now, Lee was conscious after that attack. He's undergoing surgery. Police are investigating the motive for that attack. And Kim Jong-un saying his North Korean military should, quote, thoroughly annihilate the U.S. and South Korea if provoked. This after promising to boost his country's defense. The North Korean leader making more hostile comments as the U.S. and South Korea continue to expand our military drills. The new year bringing a lot of attention here to Idaho. Two high-profile murder trials set to happen sometime in 2024. The triple murder trial for Chad Daybell expected to begin in April. A judge ruling the court will live stream it. He's accused of killing his first wife, Tammy Daybell. He's also accused of killing Tylee Ryan and J.J. Vallow, the children of his current wife, Lori Vallow Daybell. We plan to cover the trial when it begins later on this year. However, Chad's attorney has several motions that could cause the date to be delayed. Meantime, Lori Vallow Daybell already serving life here in Idaho without parole for those three murders. Now she's awaiting trial down in Arizona. In Maricopa County, she's accused of conspiring with her late brother to kill her former husband, Charles Vallow, and trying to kill her niece's then-husband, Brandon Boudreaux. Just last week, prosecutors asking for more time before bringing her to trial because many of these same witnesses will be testifying in Chad's case and as well as in Lori Vallow Daybell's. And turning to the other big trial expected to begin this year, Brian Koberger accused of killing the four students in November of 2022 at University of Idaho. But it's still unclear exactly when that trial will begin. Koberger's defense filing another motion to reconsider the original ruling to dismiss the indictment. That date has been set for the 26th of this month. This hearing is closed to the public. Following that will be another hearing with scheduling dates. The state of Idaho is filing a motion for Koberger's trial date scheduled for this summer. We will keep you updated with any new information as we continue to get it. Switching gears, police in Cuna want to know if you recognize this truck on your screen. Police believe the people driving it vandalized Christmas decorations back on Saturday in the Mineral Springs neighborhood. They want to figure out who they are so the homeowners can recover their losses. If you have any idea, be sure to call Cuna police. Well, hey, before we get to weather, we want to let you know about some new local businesses to help you start your new year off right. Well, there's a new coffee shop out in Meridian. It's Nazca Coffee Shop. It's just off Saguaro Hills Avenue. It's just east of Eagle Island, the Fred Meyer on Chindon. It's in the building where Bright Eyes Coffee used to be. If you remember it, they serve coffee roasted from Haley Coffee Company. The business just opening as of last Friday. And hey, if you have a sweet tooth, you may want to check out Flourish Bakery. That's out in Garden City, opening just a couple of weeks ago. They make fresh macaroons, naked cakes, meaning no decorations. And they have cakes in a jar for a portable snack. Well, we're waking up to some foggy conditions around the Treasure Valley this morning. A dense fog advisory will remain in effect through 11 o'clock this morning. And this air stagnation advisory set to remain in effect through Wednesday morning. Now, let's take a live look outside at Bogus Basin. And you can see these thick low clouds hanging over the Treasure Valley right now. And visibility is quite limited right now in Boise and over in Mountain Home. We're seeing less than a quarter of a mile vis of visibility right now here in Boise and in Mountain Home. But as you head west, visibility is starting to improve. They're sitting with about three miles of visibility 
visibility over in Ontario and over in Nampa. So along with this fog, we are going to see some chilly conditions this morning. Temperature is going to be right around 29 degrees at 9 a.m. We'll jump into the mid 30s around 11 o'clock, leading to our high today of 41 degrees in Boise, expected to arrive at around 3 p.m. Now over the next couple of days, we'll continue to see that inversion, some morning clouds and some possible patchy fog over the next few days, and we'll likely stay mostly dry through Thursday. We got about a 15% chance of seeing any sort of precipitation tomorrow as a weak front moves into the region. Now most of that precipitation is going to be over in eastern Oregon. They'll just see some light snowfall there, and we are going to see above average temperatures throughout the work week as we head into the weekend. We are going to see a cool down as the storm track returns on Friday, bringing us some showers on both Friday and on Saturday. We may even see some snow on Saturday. And speaking of snow, here's a look at your ski report. These are the base steps at these mountains. 31 inches at Tamarack, 15 inches over at Brundage, and 17 inches the base depth over at Bogus Basin. As for high temperatures today, much of the valley will be in the low 40s. We'll see a high of 41 degrees in Boise. 40 going to be the high over in Emmett, Caldwell, and Nampa, and 44 going to be the high in Mountain Home. 39 looking like the high over in Ontario, and then moving up to the mountains. 41 going to be the high in Idaho City. 39 looking like the high in Sun Valley, and 33 going to be the high in McCall. Thank you, Vasili. Straight ahead on CBS2 News this morning, an international security bill expected to face more trouble as lawmakers get back to business, the issue both sides want to focus on. Plus, some Americans set to start seeing more money in their bank account, while others may soon find themselves without a job. The impact of this year's wage increase. And hey, it's time for our question of the day. Let's first take a look back at Monday's question. According to one poll, about 74% of Americans say they plan to do this more often as of this year. The answer is taking more time off. All right, now for today's question. According to one poll, younger Americans more likely to say they plan on doing this in 2024 compared to older Americans. Ooh, all right, folks, what do you think it is? is CBS 2 News this morning. It's 514. Welcome back. Israel says it expects the war in the Gaza Strip to last throughout 2024. This comes as Israel is pulling thousands of troops out of the Gaza Strip. The Israeli military confirming that decision. International leaders hoping this means they're finally moving toward a new phase of lower intensity fighting against Hamas. Still, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu saying over the weekend there will be many more months of fighting in Gaza. The war between Israel and Hamas has been going on for almost three months since Hamas's October 7th attack. It comes as these it comes the same day as Israel's Supreme Court struck down a law limiting the court's ability to review government decisions, a major part of Prime Minister Netanyahu's judicial reforms. The ruling could put Israel into a political crisis amid its ongoing war in Gaza if Netanyahu's conservative allies issue a harsh response. The unity government forming after Hamas's October 7th attack could disintegrate. The law limits the court's oversight of government actions. In a statement, Netanyahu's liked party says the ruling is opposed to the will of the people. Meantime, Russia is ramping up drone attacks on Ukraine, with Moscow authorizing a record 90 drone strikes across its southern border. Russian leader Vladimir Putin says there's more to come. Yesterday's assault coming after shelling of the Russian border city of Belgorod, killing more than two dozen, wounding 100 others. Russia blaming Ukraine for Saturday's attacks. The attacks on Belgorod is one of the deadliest to take place on Russian soil since the Kremlin launched its invasion 22 months ago. The White House pushing Congress to pass aid for both Israel and Ukraine as both allies continue to fight into the new year. But there's some pushback against the president from his own party. At issue, according to some Democrats, is his administration sending new arms to Israel in a way that bypasses the normal congressional review process. This could lead to Congress splitting Israeli funding from the Ukraine for an aid package. Senate Democratic leaders resist resisting this in the past, something they would only complicate this must pass package. Well, meantime, Republicans aren't planning to pass any international aid without changes at the southern border. Now, the final months of the year brought the most migrants in a single month ever. Governor Greg Abbott publishing these numbers showing how many migrants he's bussed from his state to big cities. What we have is clearly, uh, clearly an international and federal crisis that local governments are being asked to subsidize, and this is unsustainable. 
Meantime, Republicans on Capitol Hill, including the new Speaker of the House, they're heading to the border this week for a first-hand look at the crisis before then returning to Capitol Hill. And you're taking a live look in Washington, D.C. this morning, where there's still one more big issue lawmakers need to tackle before discussing an international aid package. That's funding for our own government. The countdown, that's on. The first funding deadline hitting in just a couple of weeks. Congress not any closer to hammering out a top-line spending figure for the fiscal year of 2024. And those talks getting more complicated. That's because the House GOP is now making new demands. According to Punchbowl News, they want to speed up IRS funding cuts, moving them from the fiscal year 2025 to this year. These cuts were agreed to as part of a debt ceiling cliff idea. The first spending deadline is set for January 19th. The second is February 15th. Well, hopefully some help for workers heading into the new year. 22 states now have a higher minimum wage. According to the National Employment Law Project, many businesses are at or above $15 an hour for 2024. That also includes about 40 cities and counties across the U.S. And Oregon and Nevada plus D.C. will increase wages later on this year on July 1st. The tide was moving in the direction that we need to really step it up as employers. But not everyone sees it that way. Nationally, some companies may see the new wage laws as a strain on their bottom line. They're saying, look, inflation is killing us. The, the cost of goods is going up. Add on top this wage increase. Several Pizza Hut franchises down in California say they're now laying off all of their staff delivery drivers. That's more than 1,200 jobs lost. Franchise owners say the layoffs are due to a discontinuation of delivery services. Meantime, high costs still making an impact. Home prices and high interest rates hurting more than just the housing market. It's hitting other industries as well. The New York Times is reporting that pain in the market is also dragging down other related sectors like real estate services and mortgage lending. But people in the home improvement and those who store items like furniture are also threatened by the gridlock. This as mortgage rates begin dipping below 7% and as there are signs the Federal Reserve is looking to cut rates next year. Some good news, the box office kicking off the new year right. They appear to be recovering after slumping ticket sales since the start of the pandemic. Overall, theaters made $9 billion in ticket sales New Year's weekend. That improves on 2022's grosses, but still fail, falls short about $2 billion from pre-pandemic norms. The film Wonka taking the number one spot. I heard that's a good movie. I need to watch it, honestly. Yeah. I heard it pretty good. So. Nope, good stuff. And also speaking of watching things, paying attention out there this morning, we do have some dense fog once mm -hmm. again. So yeah, take your time. Yeah. yeah, take your time out on your commute this morning because we do have some dense fog out there. Visibility limited to under a quarter of a mile right now here in Boise. It's a little bit lighter over in the lower valley right now, but we're seeing dense fog all around the region. And we are going to see some dry conditions over the next two days. We may see a shower to pass through the Treasure Valley. Most of the most of the precipitation is going to be over in eastern Oregon tomorrow. So we see a weak front break off from this low pressure system that's set to pass to the north of us, but we are going to see a low our series of low pressure systems move through our region this weekend, likely bringing us some rain, a rain snow mixture on Friday. We may even see some snow showers on Saturday, but taking a look at today, we'll likely see those low clouds throughout the morning before we see some partly cloudy to mostly cloudy skies this afternoon. And then we'll see that front roll in this evening. Now we are going to see most of that precipitation over in eastern Oregon. They'll just see some light snowfall throughout Wednesday morning. Then we'll start to see that creep over through the Owyhees and we may see some showers out in Mountain Home tomorrow after tomorrow evening. And then it, as we hit into Thursday, that precipitation is going to move over into the Magic Valley. But as for high temperatures over the next couple of days, they are going to stay in the low 40s through Friday. We'll see some mostly dry conditions through Thursday. But then on Friday, we are going to see a rain snow mixture and that'll be followed up by some snow showers on Saturday. High temperature is also going to cool down as we head into next week. We'll see a high of 38 degrees on Saturday. 34 going to be the high on Sunday and we'll drop down to freezing as we head into Monday next week. Meanwhile, moving over to the mountains, their high temperatures right around freezing today. They'll jump up into the mid 30s on both Wednesday and Thursday and then we'll see those series of Pacific storms over the weekend. They'll see some snow showers from Friday through Monday over in the mountains. So much needed snow there. Those high temperatures are going to be below freezing by Friday and they'll drop down into the upper 20s on Saturday and then take a look at that low temperature on Monday morning going to be a chilly five degrees over in the mountains. Thank you, Vasily. Coming up on CBS 2 News this morning, saying Happy New Year to these newborns. Join us in welcoming these Idaho New Year's babies. 
I love that. Plus, committing to a dry January, the impact cutting out alcohol can have on your health. Is CBS 2 News this morning? It's 524 on your Tuesday. Welcome back. Well, the Boise and Meridian St. Luke's Hospital delivering two New Year's babies. Now at 1232 AM on January 1st, Nevaeh, Lily and Ella Rose were born. They were welcomed by their two families. Take a look. Now Lily was born to Brittany Balu and Josh Delane and Ella Rose was born to Ashley and Jasmine. At the start of each year, St. Luke's Children's Hospital gives a gift basket to the firstborn baby of the, to celebrate, of course, the new year. Well, the CDC, their new data showing respiratory illnesses are rising across the U.S. Tens of thousands of people have been hospitalized for COVID, RSV and flu each week as of this season. Now, nationally, coronavirus still leading respiratory virus hospitalizations. The CDC estimating there have been more than 7 million illnesses. That's around 37,000 hospitalizations and 4,500 deaths related to flu just this season. Lots of people trying to have a healthier new year, and for some, that means cutting back on alcohol. Medical reporter Liz Bonus shows us how some are celebrating a dry January. Hey there, everybody. There are lots of reasons to consider a dry January, which means you go the whole month without alcoholic beverages. But specialists at the Cleveland Clinic that provided this video say one of the best may be simply to drink less or drink less often. They say many of us don't realize how often and how many medical conditions are linked to alcohol. I tell patients all the time, uh, alcohol causes over 200 different uh, medical diseases. It's associated with 200 different medical diseases from, from obviously liver disease to li heart disease to different cancers to mental health issues. One other reason to consider dry January is that it can change your social habits and get you to consider perhaps some other activities that are really good for you. Removing the alcohol from the social setting, a lot of folks will come back and tell me that they actually have more meaningful conversations and they do other things than go to the bar with their friends and family. They'll go on walks, they'll go to the gym, they'll go play board games at home. Um, it's a really nice experiment to understand that you don't have to have alcohol to interact with people. Now, one thought on this, it is suggested this is a good option for people who want to cut down, but if you are truly struggling with heavy drinking or alcohol addiction, it's not suggested you go this month alone trying for a dry January. Finding support can make this journey so different and, of course, can make a big difference in long-term success. Guys? Coming up on CBS 2 News, major earthquakes shaking Japan on New Year's Day. A look at the damage and the lasting impact this event may have. Well, don't forget about our question of the day. Here it is. According to one poll, younger Americans more likely to say they plan on doing this compared in 2024 compared to older Americans. What is it? We'll read some of your guesses coming up next. Is CBS 2 News this morning? It's 530 on your Tuesday. Welcome back. Despite the GOP race for 2024 not even getting started yet, many seem to believe that battle may already be over. Now, one governor saying he thinks it's clear which Republican presidential candidates will ultimately move forward. This is a two person race, right? It's between Trump and Nikki Haley. Everybody understands that he knows his voters who want to see Trump defeated are all coming over to Nikki Haley. That's according to Governor Chris Sununu, who's referring to Chris Christie's efforts to stay a candidate. Vivek Ramaswamy, Asa Hutchinson, and Ron DeSantis also all still in the race. Governor Sununu recently endorsing Nikki Haley for president. Well, meantime, Trump still has a strong lead in the polls. The first voting set to take place in the Iowa caucuses. That's coming up in about two weeks. Many Americans expecting a Trump versus Biden rematch. But campaigning this year could be complicated. President Biden beginning the year still facing a potential impeachment. That's if Republicans have their way, along with his son being criminally charged in a federal tax case. Hunter Biden is not, of course, is of course not running for office, but in presidential politics, optics can matter. And Donald Trump already twice impeached himself, embroiled in a series of legal and civil cases, spanning accusations of deceptive business practices to insurrection. 
whether it is a court that determines he's unfit to hold office because he took up uh, force against our uh, constitution or because the electorate throws him out, uh, I don't think it really matters if he's unfit to hold office. For Trump, his calendar crowded with court hearings. There's a scheduled court hearing for a defamation claim the day after the Iowa caucus, a marketing scam trial the week after the New Hampshire will vote, and the federal criminal trial surrounding his efforts to undermine the 2020 election. That's happening the day ahead of Super Tuesday. And much more taking place both before and after the RNC. Well, meantime, the president trying to get back on the primary ballots in some states. Former President Donald Trump's legal team expected to appeal decisions that removed him from the 2024 primary ballots in Colorado and Maine. That could happen as soon as today. Colorado's Secretary of State saying she plans to follow the Supreme Court's decision on the matter. But of course, we'll await to see what the U.S. Supreme Court says. And of course, I will follow whatever order is in place throughout the election. Colorado's elections are the best in the nation, and we think we'll have a great election regardless of what happens. The decision to take Trump off the ballot based on the 14th Amendment, which says officials who have, quote, engaged in insurrection are disqualified from holding public office. Meantime, whoever does take the White House in 2024 already has quite a bit on their plate to deal with. The war in the Middle East impacting countries across the globe as efforts from rebels in Yemen impact a major train route. White House officials say they're not trying to create a bigger conflict in the Middle East after the U.S. military recently shot down three rebel ships. According to U.S. Central Command, the Iranian-backed militant group fired at U.S. helicopters while attempting to board a container ship. The helicopters fired back in what officials are calling self-defense. The Houthis say they are targeting ships along the trade route in response to the war in Gaza, stoking fears that the war could develop into a larger regional conflict. But it comes as more international conflict seems to be popping up. South Korea's opposition leader stabbed in the neck. South Korean officials saying opposition party leader Lee Jae-myung was stabbed during a visit to the city of Busan just earlier this morning. He was talking to reporters when he was attacked. Police saying the attacker approached Lee, saying he wanted to get an autograph before stabbing him in the neck. Lee was conscious after the attack. He's undergoing surgery. Police are investigating the motive for that attack. Well, Kim Jong-un saying his North Korean military should, quote, thoroughly annihilate the U.S. and South Korea if provoked. This after promising to boost his country's defense. The North Korean leader making more hostile comments as the U.S. and South Korea continue to expand military drills. And China's leader also making some troubling statements to start off the new year, saying in his New Year's address that reunification with Taiwan is, quote, inevitable. Still, Chinese leader Xi Jinping telling President Joe Biden, quote, there's no reason why the U.S. and China can't coexist. It's part of a New Year's Day letter commemorating a deal created, creating diplomatic ties back in 1979. That January 1st, the U.S. officially cut diplomatic ties with Taiwan in favor of recognizing Beijing. Well, Iran's open to fresh talks regarding its nuclear program. That's what a spokesperson for Iran's foreign ministry said in a press conference. But that could be a tall order given recent developments. One is a new U.N. nuclear watchdog report confirming the regime is increasing its production of highly enriched uranium, reaching levels close to weapons grade. Now this, as Iranian proxies continue to destabilize the Middle East following the October 7th attack on Israel. Now, Iran denying seeking nuclear-grade weapons. At least 48 people are dead after a powerful earthquake struck Japan on New Year's Day. Now experts warning dangerous aftershocks could last four months. They say the situation could get even worse before it gets any better, as Amy Kindly reports. The word going forward is to be cautious and, and be ready to evacuate again. The death toll is climbing and dozens are injured after yesterday's earthquake on Japan's west coast. Experts say the situation is still perilous. Overconfidence is one, one danger. It's almost impossible to predict exactly how many aftershocks they're going to be and when. For an earthquake of this size, um, about a magnitude 7.5, we would indeed expect the aftershock sequence to go on for days, weeks, even months. Those warnings come amid the continued search for people trapped in the rubble. The bodies are still being recovered from the rubble and the accident is not over. The good news is the immediate risk of tsunamis is over and 
there was a nuclear power plant there. It was shut down before the earthquake took place. That's a relief since a 2011 earthquake and tsunami caused a meltdown at the Fukushima nuclear plant. But it's a relief that could be short-lived. There is a small chance, um, but a non-zero chance, that we might actually see an earthquake larger than that initial shock. I'm Amy Kiley reporting. The new year bringing a lot of attention here to Idaho. Two high-profile murder trials set to happen sometime in 2024. The triple murder trial for Chad Daybell expected to begin in April. A judge ruling the court will live stream it. He's accused of killing his first wife, Tammy Daybell. He's also accused of killing Tylee Ryan and J.J. Vallow, the children of his current wife, Lori Vallow Daybell. We plan to cover the trial when it begins later on this year. However, Chad's attorney has several motions that could cause the date to be delayed. Meantime, Lori Vallow Daybell is already serving life here in Idaho without parole for those three murders. Now she's awaiting trial in Arizona as well. In Maricopa County, she's accused of conspiring with her late brother to kill her former husband, Charles Vallow, and trying to kill her niece's then husband, Brandon Boudreaux. Just last week, prosecutors asking for more time before bringing her to trial because many of the same witnesses testifying in Chad's case will testify for hers. Turning to the other big trial expected to begin this year, Brian Koberger accused of killing the four students in November of 2022 at the University of Idaho. But it's still unclear exactly when that trial will begin. Koberger's defense filing another motion to reconsider the original ruling to dismiss the indictment. That date has been set for the 26th of this month. That hearing closed to the public. Following that will be another hearing with scheduling dates. The state of Idaho is filing a motion for Koberger's trial date scheduled for this summer. We will keep you updated with new information as we continue to get it. Switching gears, police in Cuno want to know if you recognize this truck on your screen. Police believe the people driving it vandalized some Christmas decorations back on Saturday in the Mineral Springs neighborhood. They want to figure out who they are so the homeowners can recover their losses. If you have any idea, be sure to call Cuno Police. Well, hey, before we get to weather, we want to let you know about some new local businesses to help start your new year off right. There's a new coffee shop out in Meridian. It's Nazca Coffee Shop. It's just off North Saguaro here, Hills Avenue. That's just east of Eagle Island, the Fred Meyer on Chindin. It's in the building where Bright Ice Coffee used to be. Now they serve roasted coffee or coffee roasted rather from the Haley Coffee Company. The business just opening last Friday. And hey, if you have a sweet tooth, you may want to check out Flourish Bakery. That's in Garden City. Just opened a couple weeks ago. They make fresh macaroons, naked cakes, meaning no decorations and cakes in a jar for a nice portable snack. Well, we're waking up to some foggy conditions around the Treasure Valley this morning. A dense fog advisory in effect till about 11 o'clock this morning. We also have an air stagnation advisory in effect through Wednesday morning, and we are seeing some strong inversion right now over the Treasure Valley. This is a live picture of Bogus Basin. You can see those thick low clouds hanging over the region right now, and visibility is very limited in Boise, Napa, and over in Mountain Home. We're seeing less than a quarter mile of the visibility all across the Upper Valley, and then as you head west, we are starting to see that visibility improve. We're sitting with about two miles of visibility over in Ontario this morning. So along with that fog, we're also seeing some chilly temperatures. Temperature is going to be around 29 degrees at 9 a.m. We'll jump into the mid 30s around 11 o'clock, leading to our high today of 41 degrees in Boise, expected to arrive at around 3 p.m. So expect this inversion once again tomorrow morning too. We may see some patchy fog in some areas of the valley tomorrow morning, and we'll likely see some mostly dry conditions through Thursday. We have about a 15% chance of seeing some precipitation tomorrow. Most of that precipitation is going to be over in eastern North Oregon, we'll let their see, they'll see some light snow showers. Those snow showers will move across the Owyhees and then impact the Magic Valley on Thursday. And above average temperatures are expected throughout the work week, but we'll start to see a cool down over the weekend as we see a series of Pacific storms move into the region over the weekend. That'll bring us a wintry mix of rain and snow on Friday. Then we may even see some snow showers on the valley floor on Saturday. And speaking of snow, here's a look at your ski report. These are the base steps at these mountains, 31 inches of Tamarack, 15 inches of Brundage, and 17 inches of the base depth over at Bogus Basin. As for high temperatures today, we'll see a high of 41 degrees in Boise. 40 going to be the high over in Emmett, Caldwell, and Nampa. And 44 going to be the high in Mountain Home. 39 going to be the high in Ontario. And then moving up to the mountains, 41 in Idaho City. 39 going to be the high in Sun Valley. And 33 looking like the high in McCall. 
Thank you, Vasily. It's 541 on your Tuesday. It's time for our question of the day. According to one poll, younger Americans more likely to say they plan on doing this in 2024 compared to older Americans. I uh, see this one's got me stumped right now. I, I don't have like a great answer for mm -hmm. it. I'm thinking something active. Maybe mm -hmm. I don't know. Uh, I'll say I'll say maybe running a marathon. We'll oh, go with that. That's He'll what start I was going to say. Oh, no, okay. Sarah really? said that during oh, okay. the last commercial. <laughs> All right. It's a good one. It's a good one. Okay, I'll go with water skiing. Water okay. skiing. Okay. okay, cool. Some active things. All okay, right. here we go. Specific. I like it. <laughs> I think I'm going to go with travel. Travel? Love Ooh, that. I like that. Okay. That's a good one. All right, let's see what folks at home have to say. Doug says going to a music festival. Ooh, okay. That's a great guess, mm -hmm. Doug. Yeah. Also right. goes hand in hand with the traveling. Yeah. And getting out. Oh, Chris says Chris traveling. Going okay, with there we go. I like it a lot. The new year, we want to get on the move. Yeah. All right, let's see what else. Anita says getting a new job. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. All right. Well, folks, if you think you know the answer, you still have an hour and 15 minutes to get those guesses in. You can do that by heading to our Facebook page or Twitter, and we'll read more of your guesses throughout the morning and reveal the answer at the end of the show. That's right before CBS This Morning. And coming up on CBS 2 News This Morning, the FBI investigating a New Year's crash in New York. What witnesses say happened? is CBS 2 News this morning. It's 5:44 on your Tuesday. Welcome back. New York City's 2024 celebration bringing on a massive cleanup job. Take a look. The streets out in Times Square had around 100,000 pounds of litter just from New Year's Eve. It took around 187 sanitary workers to pick up all the confetti, party hats, and the other items left behind. Look at that. Oh my gosh. Well, there were about a million people in Times Square to help bring in the new year. This morning, the FBI is investigating a fatal crash New Year's in Rochester, New York. Police say two vehicles collided and hit a crowd of people. Stephanie Joseph from our Sinclair sister station there explains what happened. A deadly and fiery car crash on West Ridge Road, prompting a major police response early New Year's Day. Everybody kind of flooded towards the windows a little bit to see how close the crash actually was because it was only about 20 feet from the building. And uh, at the time when everybody was funneling out, the flames were probably still like 15 feet high. Rochester police say people were leaving a concert at the Kodak Center when the crash happened just before 1 a.m. Concert goers sheltering in place on the second floor of the venue. When the set had ended for Mo New Year's Eve at the Kodak Center, uh, everybody kind of just walked out towards the main lobby and all the security guards were kind of blocking some of the downstairs exits and funneling people up the stairs out the one side into the kind of concession area. Police say a Ford Expedition hit a Mitsubishi Outlander that was exiting a parking lot. ABC News confirming that Mitsubishi was an Uber. Two passengers died and the driver was taken to the hospital. The driver of the Ford suffering life-threatening injuries. When we did finally get outside and you saw the carnage of the cars and the one car burnt up and car pieces everywhere and it, it was surreal to think wow this happened right here and as we walked down into the hallway um, and going down the stairs the smell of gasoline was just so intense I, I couldn't believe how strong it was those inside still struggling to understand how this could happen it was crazy to see that kind of fire that was happening out front and I feel bad for all of the families that were involved a Fresno family is asking for help after a drunk driver drove straight through their apartment the day before Christmas Eve. Take a look at this. An accused drunk driver crashed through a bedroom around 1 in the morning. Family members say the driver just narrowly missed a three-month-old baby. Wall fell on me and my daughter, so I had to cover up and try to push it off. God had his hand over my family. And that, that's all really came down to. Even after the crash, the family says the driver and passengers inside tried to take off. Their important documents, clothes, and furniture all now destroyed. Right now, the family says they're thankful everyone is okay. Well, hey, before we get to weather, we want to let you know that today is a special day. It's National Buffet Day. Yeah, you can hit pause on your plans for eating healthier this new year. 
for at least one more day. Now, the buffet table itself originated from Sweden back in the 16th century, but the buffet as we know it today began appearing in the 18th century. Then in 1939, the Swedes displaying a smorgasbord at the New York World's Fair exhibition. It quickly gained popularity in the U.S. As far as the term buffet goes, that's actually a French word used to describe the side of or the type of sideboard that food was served on. I like that, a smorgasbord. That's what I always yeah. call it. Yeah, you know, it's people starting their New Year's resolutions yesterday, and it may come to an end today if they're <laughs> celebrating <laughs> National Buffet Day. That's you okay. know, or maybe they are just waiting until the third of the year. Yeah, exactly. Start, and that's okay, yeah, too. Wait a couple days. Yeah. That's okay, mm -hmm. too. Celebrate National Buffet Day. A little bit of a buffer. Buffet yeah, give yourself yeah. a buffer. Got to yeah. work your way into mm. it, you know? Yeah. Love it. <laughs> Gosh. All right. Well, weather-wise, very dense fog out there this morning. Yeah, very yeah. foggy start for us on this Tuesday. We are going to see some cloudy skies after that. We are looking at some dry conditions over the next two days. We may see a shower or two pass through the Treasure Valley on Wednesday night, but in general, we should see some dry conditions over the next few days thanks to this persistent high pressure system. But we are going to see that cleared out on Friday as a series of Pacific storms move into the region. That'll bring us a rain-snow mixture on Friday and possibly some snow showers on Saturday. But as for today, we are going to see some low clouds around the valley throughout this morning as we head into the afternoon. Those should start to clear out and we'll see some partly cloudy skies through this evening. Then tomorrow morning we are going to see a front roll through the region that is going to bring most of the precipitation over to eastern Oregon. May see some showers creep into the Treasure Valley around Mountain Home on Wednesday afternoon, but then by Wednesday evening most of those showers should move into the Magic Valley where they're expecting some snow showers on Thursday. But here in the Treasure Valley we are going to see those high temperatures in the low 40s through Friday. Now we're going to see those series of Pacific storms move in on Friday. We'll see a rain snow mixture on Friday as high temperatures drop down to 40 degrees and we'll drop down into the upper 30s on Saturday. We may see some snow showers with those low temperatures dropping below freezing. Now those high temperatures will continue to drop as we head into next week. We'll see a high of 34 degrees on Sunday and 32 degrees going to be the high on Monday. We should see some drier conditions on Sunday and Monday here in the valley. Meanwhile, moving over to the mountains, we'll see dry conditions through Thursday. High temperature is going to be in the mid 30s on both Wednesday and on Thursday for the they drop back down into the low 30s on Friday. Now it's going to be a snowy weekend over the mountains, so much needed snow moving in on Friday, and they'll likely see those snow showers through Monday. Now high temperatures are going to drop down into the 20s on both Saturday, Sunday, and on Monday. High temperatures will drop down into the low 20s by Monday, and take a look at that low temperature on Monday morning. Going to drop all the way down into the single digits. Those lows will likely be in the teens on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday morning, but by Monday morning they'll drop down to a chilly low of 5 degrees over in the mountains. Thank you, Vasily. Coming up on CBS 2 News, sticking to that New Year's resolution, some tips on pushing through to 2025. Is CBS 2 News this morning? It's 5.53. Welcome back. For many people, the start of the new year means new goals, but research shows very few have success. National correspondent Janae Bowens shows us what you can do to achieve your New Year's resolutions. It seems like everybody's talking about what they want to accomplish in this new year. To reduce my reduce the amount of my visceral abdominal fat that I have. 60% of my income goes into savings. I want to improve my posture. I feel like I have very poor posture. I According to a poll from Forbes Health and one poll, getting in shape is the most popular New Year's resolution for 2024. However, according to The Ohio State University, only 9% of Americans who make resolutions complete them. 23% of people quit their resolution by the end of the first week. 43% quit by the end of January. Okay, I'm going to go to the gym every day, every day for an hour. No, you're not. Lee Richardson, the CEO of the Brain Performance Center, a behavioral health center, says people fail their goals because they create unrealistic expectations. So what I encourage people to do is say, OK, I'm going to go to the gym three times a week and maybe it's an hour, maybe it's 45 minutes. But whatever you want to accomplish, set goals around that. Make sure that they're measurable. Make sure that they're realistic and make sure that, that you can accomplish them. She says it also helps to have an accountability partner. Done, and there's nothing wrong with asking for help. There's nothing wrong with saying, can you check in with me every week to make sure I get this done? 
That push could be what's needed to accomplish your resolution. In Washington, I'm Janae Bowens. Well, there's a lot to look forward to this year in Idaho. The first happening this Saturday, Make-A-Wish Idaho, hosting its popular polar bear plunge. Now it's taking place at Lucky Peak. It's at 11 a.m. sharp. Registration beginning at 10 a.m. Make-A-Wish Idaho, hoping to raise around $66,000 as of this year. And in February, the McCall Winter Carnival taking place. That event running Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. It starts February 23rd. You can enjoy snow sculptures, a torchlight parade, and on that Saturday, they'll be fireworks out on the lake. We have a link for all the information. Just head to our website. Meantime, somebody in Michigan starting the new year off right. They won the first Powerball jackpot of the new year worth about $842 million. Now last night, winners could get yearly payments or a lump sum payment of $425 million. According to Powerball, it's the fifth largest jackpot ever won. It's also the first time a person has won a jackpot on New Year's Day since the game started back in 1992. The prize is the second largest jackpot won in Michigan. That's after $1 billion. There was a mega million win back in 2021. Still, congratulations. All right, coming up on CBS 2 News this morning, an international security bill expected to face more problems as lawmakers get back to business. The issues both sides want to focus on. Plus, committing to a dry January, the impact cutting out alcohol can have on your health. You're watching CBS 2 News this morning, your local news and weather. They continue all day on IdahoNews.com. We'll be back with your latest headlines and Vasily's weather at the top of the hour. Take the news with you on the radio, 670 KBOI. And for news and information 24 hours a day, click on IdahoNews.com. Good morning, everyone. I'm Vasily Varlamo. Strong inversion impacting visibility around the Treasure Valley this morning. I'll let you know when this should clear out in just a bit. Good morning, I'm Ashley Carter. And coming up on CBS 2 News this morning, the fight for the 2024 GOP nomination set to begin in just a few weeks. Who's expected to take on Joe Biden this November? Good morning, I'm Sarah Jacobson. Coming up this morning, lawmakers headed back to Capitol Hill. How much time they have to decide before our government runs out of funding. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. Good morning. Thank you for waking up with us. You're taking a live look at Indian Creek Plaza on this Tuesday morning. It's January 2nd, 2024. Vasily Varlamos will have your weather coming up in just a bit. But first, new this morning, we could get access to court documents involving Jeffrey Epstein and some other big names any day now. There are hundreds of sealed court filings involving the late financier and accused sex offender. Those documents coming from a 2015 civil suit over allegation. Epstein's companion socialite Ghislaine Maxwell facilitated abuse of alleged trafficking victims. Now the judge ordered the unsealing to start as of January 1st. A U.S. district judge ruling last month that there's no legal ramifications to keep prominent names in those records private. The death toll from Japan's powerful earthquakes has now risen to 48. Japanese officials say a magnitude 7.6 quake hit the coast of central Japan yesterday afternoon. Water, power and cell service still down in some areas. Aftershocks continued in the region after the initial quake. Officials say there have been more than 100 aftershocks since that quake. Well, the FBI investigating a fatal crash in Rochester, New York. It happened outside the Kodak Center in Rochester after a New Year's celebration or New Year's Eve rather concert just after midnight back on Monday. Police say two vehicles collided and hit a crowd of people. Two people are dead, five others hurt. Rochester police chief saying investigators found at least a dozen gasoline canisters both in and around the vehicle that hit the other. An arson team also investigating that incident. We'll keep you updated. Well, despite the GOP race for 2024 not even getting started yet, many seem to believe the battle may already be over. One governor says he thinks it's clear which Republican presidential candidate will ultimately move forward.
This is a two-person race, right? It's between Trump and Nikki Haley. Everybody understands that. He knows his voters who want to see Trump defeated are all coming over to Nikki Haley. That's Governor Chris Sununu referring to Chris Christie's efforts to stay a candidate. Now Vivek Ramaswamy, Asa Hutchinson, and Ron DeSantis still in the race. Governor Sununu recently endorsing Nikki Haley for president. Well, meantime, Trump still has a strong lead in those polls. The first voting set to take place come the Iowa caucuses. That's in just two weeks. Many Americans expecting a Trump versus Biden rematch, but campaigning this year could be complicated. President Biden will begin the year still facing a potential impeachment. That's if Republicans have their way, along with his son being criminally charged in a federal tax case. Hunter Biden is not, of course, is of course not running for office, but in presidential politics, optics can matter. And Donald Trump already impeached twice himself, embroiled in a series of legal and civil cases, spanning accusations of deceptive business practices to insurrection. Whether it is a court that determines he's unfit to hold office because he took up uh, force against our uh, Constitution or because the electorate throws him out, uh, I don't think it really matters if he's unfit to hold office. For Trump, his calendar crowded with court hearings. There's a scheduled court hearing for defamation claims the day after the Iowa caucus, a marketing scam trial the week after New Hampshire votes, and the federal criminal trial surrounding efforts to overturn the 2020 election happening the day ahead of Super Tuesday, and much more taking place both before and after the Republican nominating convention. Well, meantime, the president he says the former president that is trying to get back on primary ballots in some states. Trump's legal team expected to appeal the decision that removed him from the 2024 primary ballots in Colorado and Maine. That's expected as soon as today. Colorado's Secretary of State saying she plans to follow the Supreme Court decision on the matter. But of course, we'll await to see what the U.S. Supreme Court says. And of course, I will follow whatever order is in place throughout the election. Colorado's elections are the best in the nation, and we think we'll have a great election regardless of what happens. The decision to take Trump off the ballot, they're based in the 14th Amendment, which says officials who have, quote, engaged in insurrection are disqualified from holding public office. Meantime, whoever does take the White House in 2024 already has quite a bit on their plate to deal with. The war in the Middle East impacting countries across the globe as efforts from rebels in Yemen impact a major trade route. White House officials say they're not trying to create a bigger conflict in the Middle East after the U.S. military recently shot down three rebel ships. According to U.S. Central Command, the Iranian-backed militant group fired at U.S. helicopters while attempting to board a container ship. The helicopters fired back in what officials call self-defense. The Houthis say they are targeting ships along the trade route in response to the war in Gaza, stoking fears that the war could develop into a larger regional conflict. It comes as the war in the Middle East seems to be slowing down. Israel is pulling thousands of troops out of the Gaza Strip, possibly setting the stage for a scaled back offensive that could last for much of 2024. The Gaza Health Ministry says almost 22,000 Palestinians have been killed since the war started back in October. Stay tuned, we'll take a closer look at what the war in the Middle East coming up in just a bit. The new year bringing a lot of attention here to Idaho. Two high-profile murder trials set to happen sometime in 2024. The triple murder trial for Chad Daybell expected to begin in April. A judge ruling the court will live stream it. He's accused of killing his first wife, Tammy Daybell. He's also accused of killing Tylee Ryan and J.J. Vallow, the children of his current wife, Lori Vallow Daybell. We plan to cover the trial when it begins later on this year. However, Chad's attorney has several motions that could cause that date to be delayed. Meantime, Lori Vallow Daybell already serving life here in Idaho without parole for those three murders. Now she's also awaiting trial down in Arizona. In Maricopa County, she's accused of conspiring with her late brother to kill her former husband, Charles Vallow, and trying to kill her niece's then husband, Brandon Bordeaux. Just last week, prosecutors asking for more time before bringing her to trial. That's because many of the same witnesses testifying in Chad's case will also testify for hers. Turning to the other big trial expected to begin this year, Brian Koberger is accused of killing four University of Idaho students in November of 2022, but it's still unclear exactly when that trial will begin. Koberger's defense filing another motion to reconsider the original ruling to dismiss the indictment. That date has been set for the 26th of this month. This hearing closed to the public. 
Following that will be another hearing with scheduling dates. The state of Idaho is filing a motion for Koberger's trial date scheduled for this summer. We will keep you updated with new information as we get it. And switching gears, police in CUNA want to know if you recognize this truck on your screen. Police believe that people driving it vandalized Christmas decorations back on Saturday in the Mineral Springs neighborhood. They want to figure out exactly who they are so the homeowners can recover their losses. If you have any idea, be sure to call CUNA police. Well, hey, before we get to weather, we want to let you know about some new local businesses to help you start off the new year right. There's a new coffee shop. It's in Meridian. It's Nazca Coffee Shop. It's off Saguaro Hills Avenue. It's just east of Eagle Island, the Eagle Island Fred Meyer on Chindin. It's in the building where Bright Eyes Coffee used to be. Now they serve fresh coffee roasted from Haley Coffee Company. The business just opening last Friday. And hey, if you have a sweet tooth, you may want to check out Flourish Bakery. That's out in Garden City. It opened just a couple weeks ago. They have fresh macaroons, naked cakes, meaning no decorations, and they even have cakes in jars for a nice portable snack. Well, it's a foggy start on this Tuesday. We have a dense fog advisory in effect for all of the Treasure Valley through 11 o'clock this morning. We also have an air stagnation, air stagnation advisory in effect through Wednesday morning. Taking a live look at Bogus Basin right now, we are seeing some thick low clouds hanging over the Treasure Valley this morning. And visibility is quite limited around the region right now. We are seeing about a mile and a quarter or a mile and a quarter of, of visibility over in Boise. They're seeing about a quarter of a mile of visibility over in Nampa. And visibility are, is starting to improve over in Ontario. They're sitting with about four miles of visibility right now. Now along with this fog, we are seeing some chilly temperatures this morning. Temperature is going to be right around 29 degrees at 9 a.m. We'll jump up to 35 degrees around 11 o'clock, leading to our high today of 42 degrees in Boise. Expected to arrive at around 3 p.m. Now over the next couple of days, you can expect some low clouds. We'll also see some patchy fog on both Wednesday and possibly on Thursday too. We'll see mostly dry conditions through Thursday. We got about a 15% chance of seeing precipitation on Wednesday. As a week front moves through the region, bringing most of the precipitation over to eastern Oregon. They see a few showers out in Mountain Home on Wednesday afternoon, but above average temperature is going to stick around all or throughout the work week. And then as we head into the weekend, we'll see a cool down as the storm track returns to our region, bringing us some precipitation. We may even see some snow showers on Saturday. Speaking of snow, here's a look at your ski report. These are the base steps at these mountains. 31 inches at Tamarack, 15 inches at Brundage, and 17 inches at the base depth over at Bogus Basin. As for high temperatures today, we'll see a high of 42 degrees in Boise. 44 going to be the high in Mountain Home and 41 looking like the high in Emmett and Nampa. 40 going to be the high in Caldwell and Ontario and then moving up to the mountains. 33 will be the high in McCall. Thank you, Vasily. CBS 2 and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. And as we take a live look out there at 610 this Tuesday morning, let's get a look at our morning drive from Debbie McAllister. Good morning. On the eastbound lanes of the freeway from Caldwell to Boise, no slowdowns, no crashes. Chendon eastbound is looking great as well from Middleton Road into downtown. And on State Street, same thing. Everything's looking great right now, including Garrity and Karcher heading up to the freeway. From the News Talk KVOI Traffic Studio, I'm Debbie McAllister. Thank you, Debbie. And when you hop in the car and start your morning, be sure to start it off with some team traffic updates. You can get those on News Talk 670 KBOI or 93.1 FM throughout the morning. Straight ahead on CBS 2 News this morning, an international security bill expected to face more trouble as lawmakers get back to business. The issues both sides want to focus on. Plus, some Americans said to start seeing more money in their bank account, while others may soon find themselves out of a job. The impact of this year's wage increase. And hey, it's time for our question of the day. Let's first take a look back at Monday's question. Now, according to one poll, about 74% of Americans say they plan to do this more often as of this year. All right, the answer is taking more time off. Love that. All right, now for today's question, according to one poll, younger Americans more likely to say they plan to do this in 2024 compared to older Americans. Ooh. All right, folks, what do you think it is? Is CBS 2 News this morning? 
It's 614. Welcome back. Israel says it expects the war in the Gaza Strip to last th throughout 2024. It comes as Israel is pulling thousands of troops out of the Gaza Strip. The Israeli military confirming that decision. International leaders hoping this means they're finally moving toward a new phase of lower intensity fighting against Hamas. Still, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu saying over the weekend there will be many more months of fighting in Gaza. It comes the same day as Israel's Supreme Court struck down a law limiting the court's ability to review government decisions, a major part of Prime Minister Netanyahu's judicial reforms. The ruling could put Israel into a political crisis amid its ongoing war in Gaza if Netanyahu's conservative allies issue a harsh response. The unity government, formed after Hamas's October 7th attack, could disintegrate. The law limits the court's oversight of government actions. In a statement, Netanyahu's party says the ruling is opposed to the will of the people. Meantime, Russia is ramping up drone attacks on Ukraine, with Moscow authorizing a record 90 drone strikes across its southern neighbor. Russian leader Vladimir Putin says there's more to come. Yesterday's assault comes after shelling of the Russian border city of Belgorod, killing more than two dozen, wounding 100 others. Russia blaming Ukraine for Saturday's attacks. The attacks on Belgorod is one of the deadliest to take place on Russian soil since the Kremlin launched its invasion 22 months ago. The White House pushing Congress to pass aid for both Ukraine and Israel as both allies continue to fight into the new year. But there's some pushback against the president from his own party. At issue, according to some Democrats in his administration, sending new arms to Israel in a way that bypasses the normal congressional review process. This could lead to Congress splitting Israeli funding from the Ukraine foreign aid package. Senate Democratic leaders resisting this in the past. It's something they say would only complicate the must-pass package. Well, meantime, Republicans not planning to pass any international aid without changes at the southern border. The final month of the year brought the most immigrants in a single month ever. Governor Greg Abbott publishing those numbers showing how many migrants he's bussed from his state to big cities. What we have is clearly, uh, clearly an international and federal crisis that local governments are being asked to subsidize, and this is unsustainable. Meantime, Republicans out on Capitol Hill, including the new Speaker of the House, are heading to the border this week for a first-hand look at the crisis before returning to Capitol Hill. And you're taking a live look at Washington, D.C. this morning, where there's still one more big issue lawmakers need to tackle before discussing an international aid package, funding for our own government. Now, the countdown is on, the first funding deadline hitting in just a couple of weeks. Congress not any closer to hammering out a top-line spending figure for the fiscal year of 2024, and talks are getting more complicated. That's because the House GOP is now making new demands. According to Punchbowl News, they want to speed up IRS funding cuts, moving them from fiscal year 2025 to this year. These cuts were agreed to as part of the debt cliff ceiling, that deal. Now the first spending deadline is set for January 19th. The second is February 15th. Hopefully some help for workers heading into the new year. The 22 states now have a higher minimum wage. According to the National Employment Law Project, many businesses are at or above $15 an hour for 2024. That also includes about 40 cities and counties across the U.S. Oregon, Nevada plus D.C. will increase wages later on this year on July 1st. Tide was moving in the direction that we need to really step it up as employers. But not everyone sees it that way. Nationally, some companies may see the new wage laws as a strain on their bottom line. They're saying, look, inflation is killing us. The, the cost of goods is going up. Add on top this wage increase. Several Pizza Hut franchises in California say they are now laying off all of their delivery staff drivers. That's more than 1,200 jobs lost. Franchise owners say the layoffs are due to a discontinuation of delivery services. Some good news, the box office kicking off the new year right. They appear to be recovering after slumping ticket sales since the start of the pandemic. Overall, theaters made $9 billion in ticket sales New Year's weekend. That improves on 2022's grosses, but still falls short about $2 billion from pre-pandemic norms. The film Wonka taking the number one spot. 
All right. Well, no matter where you're going this morning, uh, whether the movies or just hitting the roads, mm -hmm. very dense fog mm -hmm. out there. Yeah. yeah, very thick fog hanging around the Treasure Valley this morning. We're seeing limited visibility all around the region right now. Over in the West Central Mountains, they are seeing some fog as well, too. And we are going to see some dry conditions over the next two days thanks to this persistent high pressure system. We may see a shower or two over in eastern Oregon over the, or on Wednesday, but in general, we should see some dry conditions before a series of low pressure systems move into our region this weekend, bringing us a rain snow mixture on Friday and possibly some snow showers on Saturday. Now we're going to see that inversion throughout the morning, but as we head into the afternoon, we should see those low clouds clear out and we'll see some partly cloudy skies through this evening. Now tonight we are going to see this front moving in. This is going to bring some precipitation over to eastern Oregon. We could see some showers out in Mountain Home on Wednesday afternoon, but then as we head into Wednesday evening, we'll see that front move over into the Magic Valley where they're expecting some snow showers on Thursday morning. Now as for high temperatures over the next couple of days, they should stay in the low 40s. We are going to see that Pacific storm arriving on Friday, bringing us a rain snow mixture. And as temperatures drop below freezing overnight, we may see some snow showers around the valley on Saturday morning. Now temperatures will drop down into the upper 30s on Saturday and will drop into the mid 30s on Sunday. Then we could see those high temperatures dropping right around freezing next Monday. Meanwhile, moving over to the mountains, we'll see partly cloudy skies today, followed by mostly cloudy skies tomorrow. High temperatures should jump up into the mid 30s on both Wednesday and Thursday before dropping below freezing on Friday. We'll likely see a snow weekend over in the mountains. They'll see snow showers from Friday through Monday. High temperatures will drop down into the upper 20s on Saturday and they'll drop down into the mid 20s on Sunday, dropping all the way down into the low 20s by Monday and take a look at that low temperature on Monday morning, dropping all the way down to the single digits over in the mountains. Thank you, Vasily. CBS 2 and News Talk KBOY bring you team traffic all morning long. And as we take a live look out there at 621 this morning, let's get an update from Debbie McAllister. Good morning on the eastbound lanes of the freeway from Caldwell to Boise. No slowdowns, no crashes. Starting to see some extra traffic on Karcher heading over to the freeway from Middleton Road. A little bit of extra traffic on Garrity as well heading up to Stam Lane. And Chindon's looking good eastbound from Middleton Road into downtown Boise. State Street looks great as well. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Debbie McAllister. Thank you, Debbie. And when you hop in the car and start your morning, be sure to start it off with News Talk 670 KBOI or 93.1 FM for even more team traffic updates. Coming up on CBS 2 News this morning, say Happy New Year to these newborns. Join us in welcoming these Idaho New Year babies. I love that. Plus, committing to a dry January, the impact cutting out alcohol can have on your health. is CBS 2 News this morning. It's 624 on your Tuesday. Welcome back. The Boise and Meridian St. Luke's Hospital delivering two New Year's babies. Take a look now at 1232 AM on January 1st. Nevea Lilly and Ella Rose were born and welcomed by their two families. Oh, look at them. Lilly was born to Brittany Ballou and Josh Delane. And Ella Rose was born to Jasmine, Jasmine and Ashley at the start of each year. St. Luke's Children's Hospital gives a gift basket to the first baby born to celebrate the new year. Oh, congratulations. All right, well, switching gears, the CDC has new data showing respiratory illnesses arising across the U.S. Tens of thousands of people have been hospitalized for coronavirus, RSV, and the flu each week this season. Well, nationally, coronavirus still leading respiratory virus hospitalizations. The CDC estimating there have been more than 7 million illnesses, 73,000 hospitalizations, and 4,500 deaths related to flu just this season. Lots of people trying to have a healthier new year, and for some, that means cutting back on alcohol. Medical reporter Liz Bonus shows us how some are trying to celebrate a dry January. Hey there, everybody. There are lots of reasons to consider a dry January, which means you go the whole month without alcoholic beverages. But specialists at the Cleveland Clinic that provided this video say one of the best may be simply to drink less or drink less often. They say many of us don't realize how often and how many medical conditions are linked to alcohol. I tell patients all the time, uh, alcohol causes over 200 different uh, medical diseases. 
it's associated with 200 different medical diseases from, from obviously liver disease to li heart disease to different cancers to mental health issues. One other reason to consider dry January is that it can change your social habits and get you to consider perhaps some other activities that are really good for you. Removing the alcohol from the social setting, a lot of folks will come back and tell me that they actually have more meaningful conversations and they do other things than go to the bar with their friends and family. They'll go on walks, they'll go to the gym, they'll go play board games at home. Um, it's a really nice experiment to understand that you don't have to have alcohol to interact with people. Now, one thought on this, it is suggested this is a good option for people who want to cut down, but if you are truly struggling with heavy drinking or alcohol addiction, it's not suggested you go this month alone trying for a dry January. Finding support can make this journey so different and, of course, can make a big difference in long-term success. This is CBS 2 News this morning. It's 630 on your Tuesday. Welcome back. Despite the GOP race for 2024 not even started yet, many seem to believe that battle may already be over. Now, one governor says he thinks it's clear which Republican presidential candidates will ultimately move forward. This is a two person race, right? It's between Trump and Nikki Haley. Everybody understands that he knows his voters who want to see Trump defeated are all coming over to Nikki Haley. That's Governor Chris Sununu referring to Chris Christie's efforts to stay a candidate. Now Vivek Ramaswamy, Asa Hutchinson and Ron DeSantis are also still in the race. Governor Sununu recently endorsing Nikki Haley for president. Well, meantime, Trump still has a strong lead in the polls. The first voting set to take place in Iowa, the caucuses. That's coming up in about two weeks. Many Americans expected a Trump or expecting rather a Trump versus Biden rematch. But campaigning this year could be complicated. President Biden beginning the year facing a potential impeachment. That's if Republicans have their way, along with his son being criminally charged in a federal tax case. Hunter Biden is not, of course, is of course not running for office, but in presidential politics, optics can matter. And Donald Trump already twice impeached himself is embroiled in a series of legal and civil cases spanning accusations of deceptive business practices to insurrection. Whether it is a court that determines he's unfit to hold office because he took up uh, force against our uh, Constitution or because the electorate throws him out, uh, I don't think it really matters if he's unfit to hold office. For Trump, his calendar is crowded with court hearings. There's a scheduled court hearing for defamation claims the day after the Iowa caucus, a marketing scam trial the week after New Hampshire votes, the federal criminal trial surrounding efforts to overturn the 2020 election happening the day ahead of Super Tuesday and much more taking place both before and after the Republican nominating convention. Well, meantime, the former president trying to get back on primary ballots in some states. Trump's legal team expected to appeal the decision that removed him from the 2024 primary ballot in the states of Colorado and Maine. That could happen as soon as today. Colorado's secretary of state saying she plans to follow the Supreme Court's decision on the matter. But of course, we'll await to see what the U.S. Supreme Court says. And of course, I will follow whatever order is in place throughout the election. Colorado's elections are the best in the nation, and we think we'll have a great election regardless of what happens. The decision to take Trump off the ballot is based on the 14th Amendment, which says officials have quote, in, who have, quote, engaged in insurrection are disqualified from holding public office. Meantime, whoever does take the White House in 2024 already has quite a bit on their plate to deal with, with the war in the Middle East impacting countries across the globe as efforts from rebels in Yemen impact a major trade route. White House officials say they're not trying to create a bigger conflict in the Middle East after the U.S. military recently shot down three rebel ships. According to U.S. Central Command, the Iranian-backed militant group fired at U.S. helicopters while attempting to board a container ship. The helicopters fired back in what officials are calling self-defense. The Houthis say they are targeting ships along the trade route in response to the war in Gaza, stoking fears that the war could develop into a larger regional conflict. Well, it comes as more international conflict seems to be popping up. South Korea's opposition leader has been stabbed in the neck. Now, South Korean officials saying opposition party leader Lee Jae-myung was stabbed during a visit to the city of Busan early this morning. He was talking to reporters when he was attacked. 
Police saying the attacker approached Lee and said he wanted to get an autograph before stabbing him in the neck. Lee was conscious. After the attack, he's undergoing surgery. Police are investigating the motive for that attack. Well, Kim Jong-un saying his North Korean military should, quote, thoroughly annihilate the U.S. and South Korea if provoked. This after promising to boost his country's defense. The North Korean leader making more hostile comments at the U.S. and South Korea as they expand military drills. At least 48 people are dead after a powerful earthquake struck Japan on New Year's Day. Now experts warn dangerous aftershocks could last four months. They say the situation could get even worse before it gets any better, as Amy Kindly reports. The word going forward is to be cautious and, and be ready to evacuate again. The death toll is climbing and dozens are injured after yesterday's earthquake on Japan's west coast. Experts say the situation is still perilous. Overconfidence is one, one danger. It's almost impossible to predict exactly how many aftershocks they're going to be and when. For an earthquake of this size, um, about a magnitude 7.5, we would indeed expect the aftershock sequence to go on for days, weeks, even months. Those warnings come amid the continued search for people trapped in the rubble. The bodies are still being recovered from the rubble and the accident is not over. The good news is the immediate risk of tsunamis is over and... There was a nuclear power plant there. It was shut down before the earthquake took place. That's a relief since a 2011 earthquake and tsunami caused a meltdown at the Fukushima nuclear plant. But it's a relief that could be short-lived. There is a small chance, um, but a non-zero chance, that we might actually see an earthquake larger than that initial shock. I'm Amy Kiley reporting. The new year bringing a lot of attention here to Idaho. Two high-profile murder trials set to happen sometime in 2024. The triple murder trial for Chad Daybell expected to begin in April. A judge ruling the court will live stream it. Chad is accused of killing his first wife, Tammy Daybell, and he's also accused of killing Tylee Ryan and J.J. Vallow, the children of his current wife, Lori Vallow Daybell. We plan to cover the trial when it begins later on this year. However, Chad's attorney has filed several motions that could cause the date to be delayed. Meantime, Lori Vallow Daybell already serving life here in Idaho without parole for those three murders. Now she's awaiting trial down in Arizona. In Maricopa County, she's accused of conspiring with her late brother to kill her former husband, Charles Vallow, and trying to kill her niece's then-husband, Brandon Bordeaux. Just last week, prosecutors asking for more time before bringing her to trial. That's because many of the same witnesses testifying in Chad's case will also testify for Lori's. Turning to the other big trial expected to begin this year, Brian Koberger is accused of killing four University of Idaho students in November of 2022, but it's still unclear when exactly that trial will begin. Koberger's defense filing another motion to reconsider the original ruling to dismiss the indictment. That date has been set for the 26th of this month. The hearing closed to the public. Following that will be another hearing with scheduling dates. The state of Idaho is filing for a motion for Koberger's trial date scheduled for this summer. We will keep you updated with new information as we get it. Switching gears, police in CUNA want to know if you recognize this truck. Police believe the people driving it vandalized Christmas decorations back on Saturday in the Mineral Springs neighborhood. They want to figure out who they are so the homeowners can recover their losses. If you have any idea, be sure to call CUNA police. Well, before we get to weather, we want to let you know about some new local businesses to help you start your new year off right. There's a new coffee shop. It's in Meridian. Nazca Coffee Shop. It's off Saguaro Hills Avenue. That's just east of Eagle Island, Fred Meyer on Chindon. It's in the building where Bright Eyes Coffee used to be. Now they serve coffee roasted from Haley Coffee Company. The business just opening last Friday. And hey, if you have a sweet tooth, you may want to check out Flourish Bakery. That's out in Garden City, opening just a few weeks ago. They make fresh macaroons, naked cakes, meaning no decoration. And get this, cakes in a jar for a nice portable snack. 
Well, we're waking up to some foggy conditions around the Treasure Valley this morning. A dense fog advisory will remain in effect through 11 o'clock this morning. An air stagnation advisory also going to remain in effect through Wednesday morning. And let's take a live look outside across the Treasure Valley because you can see these thick low clouds hanging over the region right now. And visibility is limited all across the region. We're looking at a quarter of a mile of visibility over in Nampa. Visibility has improved here in Boise. We're sitting with about three miles of visibility and they're just over a third of a, a mile of visibility over in Mountain Home this morning. So while we're seeing some fog, we're also seeing some chilly conditions too. Temperatures are going to be right around 29 degrees at 9 a.m. We'll jump into the mid 30s around 11 o'clock, leading to a high today at 42 degrees in Boise, expected to arrive at around 3 p.m. So over the next few days, look for some morning clouds and we'll likely see some patchy fog once again on Wednesday. Look for mostly dry conditions on Thursday. We got about a 15% chance of seeing any sort of precipitation on Wednesday. As a weak front moves through the region, most of that precipitation going to be over in eastern Oregon where they're looking at some light snow showers, but here in the Treasure Valley we should see mostly dry conditions through Thursday and we're looking at above average temperatures throughout the work week, but a storm the storm track is set to return on Friday with a series of storms on both Friday and on Saturday impacting the region and also dropping temperatures over the weekend. Now let's take a look at your ski report. These are the base steps at these mountains, 31 inches at Tamarack, 15 inches at Brundage and 17 inches the base depth over at Bogus Basin. As for high temperatures today, we'll see a high of 42 degrees in Boise, 41 going to be the high over in Emmett and Nampa. And 40 looking like the high in Ontario and Caldwell. A bit more mild over in Mountain Home. We'll see a high of 44 degrees to date. Then moving up to the mountains, 41 in Idaho City, 39 in Sun Valley, and 33 will be the high in McCall. Thank you, Vasily. CBS2 and News Talk KBOI bringing you team traffic all morning long. And as we take a live look out there at 6:40 this Tuesday morning, let's take a look at the drive with Debbie McAllister. Good morning on the eastbound lanes of the freeway from Caldwell to Boise. No slowdowns, no crashes. Starting to see some heavier traffic coming off of Meridian Road onto the eastbound lanes of the freeway. But not too bad just yet. On Chendon eastbound from Middleton Road into downtown. Still nothing to slow you down there. And State Street, it's the same thing. Everything looks great this morning for your commute. From the News Talk KBY Traffic Studio, I'm Debbie McAllister. Thank you, Debbie. And when you hop in the car and start your morning, be sure to start it off with some team traffic updates during your drive. You can get those by turning on 670 AM or 93.1 FM. Both of those will take you to KBOI. All right, well, at 640 on your Tuesday, it's time for our question of the day. That question, according to one poll, younger Americans more likely to say they plan on doing this for the year of 2024 compared to older adults. I'm going to go with my guess from the first hour and I'm going to say run a marathon. What do you guys think? All right. I like it. I'm thinking so I'm going to stick with water skiing, Okay, but, I like but it. any type of skiing. We're just going to all encompass. Yeah. Water, yeah. snow skiing. There we go. I, I need like a win. It. All right. Yeah. yeah. Let's, let's see what else. What do you think, Ash? Okay. I'm going to stick with travel. That's a great one. Yep. This is a big one on my bucket list. All right. Bo says moving. Ooh, okay. okay. Mm -hmm. I like that guess, Bo. It's Time a good for one. something new. Yeah. Michael says learning a trade. Oh, oh that's, that's a great one. Creative guesses yeah. this morning. I like well, it. Yeah. yeah. All right. Let's see what else we have. Oh, Mary says working out. Oh, another good one, too. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. a good guess, one. Mary. All right. Well, folks, if you think you know the answer, you have about 15 minutes to get your guesses in. You can do that by heading to our Facebook or Twitter, guessing on that question of the day post, and we'll reveal the answer at the end of the show. That's right before CBS This Morning. Well, still to come on CBS 2 News This Morning, the FBI investigating a New Year's crash in New York. What witnesses say happened? CBS 2 News this morning. It's 645 on your Tuesday morning. Welcome back this morning. The FBI is investigating a fatal New Year's crash in Rochester, New York. Police say two vehicles collided and hit a crowd of people. Stephanie Joseph from our Sinclair sister station there explains what happened. A deadly and fiery car crash on West Ridge Road, prompting a major police response early New Year's Day. Everybody kind of flooded towards the windows a little bit to see how close the crash actually was because it was only about 20 feet from the building. And uh, at the time when everybody was funneling out, the flames were probably still like 15 feet high. Rochester police say people were leaving a concert at the Kodak Center when the crash happened just before 1 a.m. Concert goers sheltering in place on the second floor of the venue. When the 
set had ended for Mo New Year's Eve at the Kodak Center, uh, everybody kind of just walked out towards the main lobby and all the security guards were kind of blocking some of the downstairs exits and funneling people up the stairs out the one side into the kind of concession area. Police say a Ford Expedition hit a Mitsubishi Outlander that was exiting a parking lot. ABC News confirming that Mitsubishi was an Uber. Two passengers died and the driver was taken to the hospital. The driver of the Ford suffering life-threatening injuries. When we did finally get outside and you saw the carnage of the cars and the one car burnt up and car pieces everywhere and it, it was surreal to think, wow, this happened right here. And as we walked down into the hallway um, and going down the stairs, the smell of gasoline was just so intense. I, I couldn't believe how strong it was. Those inside still struggling to understand how this could happen. It was crazy to see that kind of fire that was happening out front. And I feel bad for all of the families that were involved. A Fresno family is asking for help after a drunk driver drove straight through their apartment the day before Christmas Eve. Take a look at this. An accused drunk driver crashed through a bedroom around one in the morning. Family members say the driver just narrowly missed a three month old baby. The wall fell on me and my daughter, so I had to cover up and try to push it off. God had his hand over my family. And that, that's all really came down to. Even after the crash, the family says the driver and passengers inside tried to take off. Their important documents, clothes and furniture all destroyed. Right now, the family says they're just thankful everyone is okay. Well, hey, before we get to weather, we want to let you know today, a very special day. It's National Buffet Day. Yeah, you can hit pause on your plans for healthier eating in the new year for at least one more day. The buffet table itself originated from Sweden in the 16th century, but the buffet we know today began appearing in the 18th century. Then in 1939, the Swedes displaying a smorgasbord that was at New York World's Fair exhibition. It quickly gained popularity across the U.S. As far as the term buffet goes, that's actually a French word used to describe a type of sideboard the food was served from. See, I love saying smorgasbord, a little bit of everything. <laughs> That's great. pretty great. We like that word a lot. And also, too, yeah, you, just, you can start those New Year's resolutions a couple days later. You know, exactly. just wait a little bit longer. It's National Buffet Day. Might as well enjoy it. Yeah. So ease into it. Yeah, and a good day to stay mm -hmm. inside and mm -hmm. eat from a buffet of your yeah. choosing. Yeah, yeah. You know, you might want to cuddle back up into that blanket yeah. this morning because we are seeing yeah. some dense fog around the valley, some gloomy conditions hanging around right now. We are going to see some mostly dry conditions over the next two days thanks to this large high pressure system that's been keeping us dry over the past week. But we have a very active pattern out in the Pacific and we are going to see a series of storms moving in on Friday that are going to bring some that is going to bring precipitation to the region. We'll likely see a rain snow mixture on fi Friday, followed by some some uh, snow showers here in the valley on Saturday. Now we'll likely see some partly cloudy skies after this inversion clears up this afternoon. And then by this evening, we'll see a weak front roll in that'll mostly just bring precipitation over to eastern Oregon as we head throughout the day on Wednesday. Now we're looking at mostly cloudy skies here in the valley. We may see some showers between Boise and Mountain Home on Wednesday afternoon before those showers move out into the Magic Valley as we head into Thursday morning. So temperatures are going to be in the mid 40s throughout the work week. We are going to see that rain snow mixture on Friday, followed by some snow showers on Saturday. Now high temperatures are going to drop thanks to some cool air that's going to move in with these fronts. We'll see those high temperatures dropping down to the upper 30s on Saturday and we'll drop down to the mid 30s on Sunday. Should see those high temperatures dropping all the way down right around freezing on Monday and those low temperatures going to drop down into the low 20s by Monday morning. Meanwhile, moving over to the mountains, they're going to see those highs in the mid 30s on both Wednesday and Thursday before dropping down below freezing on Friday and they're going to see some snow showers throughout the weekend over in the mountains. Those snow showers will extend into Monday next week. Take a look at this temperature drop. They'll drop down into the upper 20s on Saturday before dropping down into the mid 20s on Sunday. Those highs will drop all the way down to the low 20s on Monday. Take a look at that low temperature on Monday morning. Going to be a chilly 5 degrees over in the mountains. Thank you, Vasily. CBS 2 and News Talk KBOI bring in you team traffic all morning long. And let's check in on the drive with Debbie McAllister this morning.
Good morning on the eastbound lanes of the freeway. We're starting to see a heavy merge off of 10 Mile and also off of Meridian Road. It's really heavy off of Meridian Road onto the eastbound lanes of the freeway. Congesting traffic on the eastbound lanes between Meridian Road and Locust Grove. Extra traffic on Eagle Road northbound between Overland and Pine. And Chinden still looking good eastbound between Middleton Road and downtown Boise. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Debbie McAllister. Thank you, Debbie. And when you hop in the car this morning, be sure to start your day off with some team traffic updates. You can get those on News Talk 670 KBOI or 93.1 FM. Coming up on CBS 2 News, sticking to that New Year's resolution, some tips on pushing through to 2025. CBS 2 News this morning. It's 6.53 on your Tuesday. Welcome back. New York City's 2024 celebration bringing on a massive cleanup job. Take a look. The streets out in Times Square had about 100,000 pounds of litter from New Year's Eve celebrations. It took around 187 of their sanitary workers to pick up all the confetti, party hats, and other items left behind. Yeah, look at that. Well, there were about a million people in Times Square to help bring in the new year. For many people, the start of the new year means new goals, but research shows very few have success. National correspondent Janae Bowens shows us what you can do to achieve your New Year's resolutions. It seems like everybody's talking about what they want to accomplish in this new year. To reduce my reduce the amount of my visceral abdominal fat that I have. 60% of my income goes into savings. I want to improve my posture. I feel like I have very poor posture. I According to a poll from Forbes Health and one poll, getting in shape is the most popular New Year's resolution for 2024. However, according to The Ohio State University, only 9% of Americans who make resolutions complete them. 23% of people quit their resolution by the end of the first week. 43% quit by the end of January. Okay, I'm going to go to the gym every day, every day for an hour. No, you're not. Lee Richardson, the CEO of the Brain Performance Center, a behavioral health center, says people fail their goals because they create unrealistic expectations. So what I encourage people to do is say, OK, I'm going to go to the gym three times a week and maybe it's an hour, maybe it's 45 minutes. But whatever you want to accomplish, set goals around that. Make sure that they're measurable. Make sure that they're realistic and make sure that, that you can accomplish them. She says it also helps to have an accountability partner. Son, and there's nothing wrong with asking for help. There's nothing wrong with saying, can you check in with me every week to make sure I get this done? That push could be what's needed to accomplish your resolution. In Washington, I'm Janae Bowens. Well, hey, there's a lot to look forward to this year here in Idaho. The first thing happening this Saturday, mark your calendars, Make-A-Wish Idaho hosting their Polar Bear Plunge. It's taking place at Lucky Peak at 11 a.m. Registration beginning at 10 a.m. Make-A-Wish Idaho hoping to raise around $66,000 this year. Love that. Lots of wishes, yeah. which is very exciting. All right, well, it is time for our question of the day. According to one poll, younger Americans are more likely to say they plan on doing this in 2024 compared to older Americans. What is it? That answer, learn a new skill. Oh, nice. That's a good one. A good resolution, I would yeah. say. All right, folks, well, our next newscast coming up at 11. Your local news and weather continue all day on IdahoNews.com and the CBS2 mobile app. Take the news with you on the radio. News Talk KBOI. And for news and information 24 hours a day, click on IdahoNews.com. CBS Mornings is coming up next. And watch for your next local newscast on CBS 2 today at 11. Connect with CBS 2 for local news and weather on IdahoNews.com.
This is Fox 9 News This Morning. Good morning. It's 7 o'clock. Welcome to Fox 9 News. I'm Sarah Jacobson. And I'm Ashley Carter. Thank you for joining us on your Tuesday morning. Let's dive right into our top stories of the day. New this morning, we could get access to court documents involving Jeffrey Epstein and some other big names that's happening any day now. Now, there are hundreds of sealed court filings involving the late financier and accused sex offender. Those documents come from a 2015 civil suit over allegations. Epstein's companion socialite, Ghislaine Maxwell, facilitated the abuse of alleged trafficking victims. Now the judge ordered the unsealing to start as of January 1st. A U.S. District Judge ruling last month there's no legal justification to keep prominent names in those records private. The death toll from Japan's powerful earthquakes has now risen to 48. Japanese officials say a magnitude 7.6 quake hit the coast of central Japan yesterday afternoon. Water, power and cell service still down in some areas. Aftershocks continuing in the region after the initial quake. Officials say there have been more than 100 aftershocks. Well, the FBI investigating a fatal crash out in Rochester, New York. The crash happening outside the Kodak Center. That's in Rochester after a New Year's Eve concert just after midnight on Monday. Police saying about two vehicles, rather two vehicles collided and hit a crowd of people. Two people are dead, five are hurt. Rochester's police chief saying investigators found at least a dozen gasoline canisters both in and around the vehicle that hit the other. An arson team is investigating that incident. Well, despite the GOP race for 2024 not even getting started yet, many seem to believe the battle may already be over. One governor says he thinks it's clear which Republican presidential candidate will ultimately move forward. This is a two-person race, right? It's between Trump and Nikki Haley. Everybody understands that. He knows his voters who want to see Trump defeated are all coming over to Nikki Haley. That's Governor Chris Sununu referring to Chris Christie's efforts to stay on as a candidate. Vivek Ramaswamy, Aza Hutchinson, and Ron DeSantis also still in the race. Governor Sununu recently endorsing Nikki Haley for president. Meantime, Trump still has a strong lead on those polls. The first voting set to take place in the Iowa caucuses. That's in about two weeks. Many Americans expecting a Trump versus Biden rematch. But campaigning this year, it could be complicated. President Biden beginning a year, the year still facing a potential impeachment. That's if Republicans have their way, along with his son being criminally charged in federal tax cases. Hunter Biden is not, of course, is of course not running for office, but in presidential politics, optics can matter. And Donald Trump already twice impeached himself embroiled in a series of legal and civil cases spanning accusations of deceptive business practices to insurrection. Whether it is a court that determines he's unfit to hold office because he took up uh, force against our uh, Constitution or because the electorate throws him out, uh, I don't think it really matters if he's unfit to hold office. For Trump, the calendar crowded with court hearings. There's a scheduled court hearing for defamation claims the day after the Iowa caucus, a marketing scam trial the week after New Hampshire votes, the federal criminal trial surrounding efforts to overturn the 2020 election happening the day before Super Tuesday, and much more taking place both before and after the Republican nominating convention. Meantime, the former president trying to get back on the primary ballots in some states. Former President Trump's legal team expected to appeal the decision that removed him from the 2024 primary ballots in both Colorado and Maine. That could happen as soon as today. Now, Colorado's Secretary of State saying she plans to follow the Supreme Court's decision on this matter. But of course, we'll await to see what the U.S. Supreme Court says. And of course, I will follow whatever order is in place throughout the election. Colorado's elections are the best in the nation, and we think we'll have a great election regardless of what happens. The decision to take Trump off the ballot is based on the 14th Amendment, which officials who have, which says officials who have, quote, engaged in an insurrection are disqualified from holding public office. Meantime, whoever does take the White House in 2024 already has quite a bit on their plate to deal with. The war in the Middle East impacting countries across the globe as efforts from rebels in Yemen impact a major trade route. White House officials say they're not trying to create a bigger conflict in the Middle East after the U.S. military recently shot down three rebel ships. 
According to U.S. Central Command, the Iranian-backed militant group fired at U.S. helicopters while attempting to board a container ship. The helicopters fired back in what officials call self-defense. The Houthis say they are targeting ships along the trade route in response to the war in Gaza, stoking fears that the war could develop into a larger regional conflict. It comes as the war in the Middle East seems to be slowing down. Israel is pulling thousands of troops out of the Gaza Strip, possibly setting the stage for a scaled-back offensive. That could last for much of 2024. The Gaza Health Ministry says almost 22,000 Palestinians have been killed since the start of the war in October. Stay tuned. We will take a closer look at the war in the Middle East coming up in just a bit. But it comes as more international conflict seems to be popping up. South Korea's opposition leader has been stabbed in the neck. Now, South Korean officials say opposition party leader Lee Jae Myung was stabbed during a visit to the city of Busan early this morning. He was talking to reporters when he was attacked. Police say the attacker approached Lee, saying he wanted an autograph before stabbing him in the neck. Now, Lee was conscious after the attack and will undergo surgery. Police are investigating the motive for the attack. Well, Kim Jong-un says his North Korean military should, quote, thoroughly annihilate the U.S. and South Korea if provoked. This after promising to boost his country's defense. The North Korean leader making more hostile comments as the U.S. and South Korea expand military drills. The new year bringing a lot of attention here to Idaho. Two high-profile murder trials set to happen sometime in 2024. The triple murder trial for Chad Daybell expected to begin in April. A judge ruling the court will live stream it. Chad is accused of killing his first wife, Tammy Daybell. He's also accused of killing Tylee Ryan and JJ Vallow, the children of his current wife, Lori Vallow Daybell. We plan to cover the trial when it begins later on this year. However, Chad's attorney has several motions that could cause the date to be delayed. Meantime, Lori Vallow Daybell is already serving life here in Idaho without parole for those three murders. Now she's awaiting trial in Arizona. Down in Maricopa County, she's accused of conspiring with her late brother to kill her former husband, Charles Vallow, and trying to kill her niece's then-husband, Brandon Bordeaux. Just last week, prosecutors asking for more time bringing her, before bringing her to trial because many of the same witnesses testifying in Chad's case will also testify for Lori's. Turning to the other big trial expected to begin this year, Brian Koberger. He's accused of killing the four University of Idaho students in November of 2022, but it's still unclear exactly when that trial will begin. Koberger's defense filing another motion to reconsider the original ruling to dismiss the indictment. That date has been set for the 26th of this month. This hearing is closed to the public. Following that will be another hearing with scheduling dates. The state of Idaho is filing a motion for Koberger's trial date scheduled for this summer. We will keep you updated with any new information as we receive it. And switching gears, police in Cuna want to know if you recognize this truck. Police believe the people driving it vandalized Christmas decorations back on Saturday in the Mineral Springs neighborhood. They want to figure out who they are so the homeowners can recover their losses. If you have any idea, call CUNA Police. Well, before we get to weather, we want to let you know about some new local businesses to help you start your new year off right. There's a new coffee shop out in Meridian. Nazca Coffee Shop. It's located off Saguaro Hill Avenue. It's just east of Eagle Island's Fred Meyer on Chinden. It's in the building where Bright Eyes Coffee used to be. Now they serve coffee roasted from the Haley Coffee Company. The business just opening last Friday. And if you have a sweet tooth, you may want to check out Flourish Bakery. That's out in Garden City. It opened just a couple weeks ago. They make fresh macaroons, naked cakes, meaning no decorations, and cakes in a jar for a portable snack. Well, we're waking up to some foggy conditions around the Treasure Valley this morning. A dense fog advisory will remain in effect through 11 o'clock this morning. And our air stagnation advisory will remain in effect through Wednesday morning tomorrow. And let's take a live look outside across, or at Bogus Basin. We are seeing some thick low clouds hanging over the region right now. And visibility is starting to improve here in Boise. However, we're still seeing some thick fog out in Nampa this morning. Mountain Home also seeing some fog this morning too. And we got about 2.5 miles of visibility over in Ontario right now. Now, 
Now we are going to see along with this fog some chilly temperatures this morning. Temperature is going to be around 28 degrees at 9 a.m. We'll jump up into the mid 30s around 11 o'clock leading to our high today of 42 degrees in Boise expected to arrive at around 3 p.m. So over the next few days expect those morning clouds to continue and we'll likely see some patchy fog tomorrow. We'll see some mostly dry conditions through Thursday. We may see a shower or two pass through the Treasure Valley tomorrow, but in general most of that precipitation is going to be over in eastern Oregon and we are going to see above average temperatures through the work week, but we'll see a cool down over the weekend along with multiple storms as we see some possible snow on Saturday. Now speaking of snow, here's a look at your ski report. These are the base steps at these mountains. 31 inches at Tamarack, 15 inches at Brundage, and 17 inches going to be or is the base depth over at Bogus Basin. And then as for your fishing game forecast, that morning peak passed at around 6 a.m. this morning. Our evening peak going to be around 540 tonight. Now as for high temperatures today, we'll see a high of 42 degrees in Boise. 41 going to be the high over in Emmett, Caldwell, and Nampa, and 44 going to be the high in Mountain Home. Then moving up to the mountains, 34 going to be the high in McCall. Thank you, Vasily. Fox 9 News and News Talk KBOY bringing you a team traffic all morning long. And as we take a live look out there at 710 this Tuesday morning, let's check in on the drive with Debbie McAllister. Good morning on Karcher. We have a little bit of extra traffic starting right about Middle Tit Road heading up to the freeway. Garrity's looking good and so is Northside. Still have some extra traffic on Meridian Road north bound but the merge is much better so it's looking good out on the eastbound lanes of the freeway chendon's looking good as well eastbound from middleton road into downtown the commute is going well so far from the news talk kboi traffic studio i'm debbie McAllister. thank you debbie and when you hop in the car and start your morning be sure to start it off with some more team traffic updates you can get those by turning your dial to 670 AM or 93.1 FM, and both of those will take it at KBOI. Straight ahead on Fox 9 News, an international security bill expected to face more trouble as lawmakers get back to business. The issues both sides want to focus on. Plus, some Americans said to start seeing more money in their bank accounts, while others may soon find themselves out of a job. The impact of this year's wage increase. Fox 9 News this morning. It's 715. Welcome back. Israel says it expects the war in the Gaza Strip to last throughout 2024. This comes as Israel is pulling thousands of troops out of the Gaza Strip. The Israeli military confirming that decision. International leaders hoping this means they are finally moving toward a new phase of lower intensity fighting against Hamas. Still, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said over the weekend there would be many more months of fighting in Gaza. And Israel's military said in a statement it expects continue fighting through the year. The war between Israel and Hamas has been going on for almost three months since Hamas's October 7th attack. It comes the same day Israel's Supreme Court struck down a law limiting the court's ability to review government decisions, a major part of Prime Minister Netanyahu's judicial reforms. The ruling could put Israel into a political crisis amid its ongoing war in Gaza. If Netanyahu's conservative allies issue a harsh response, the unity government formed after Hamas's October 7th attack could disintegrate. The law limits the court's oversight of government actions. In a statement, Netanyahu's liked party says the ruling is opposed to the will of the people. The White House pushing Congress to pass aid for both Ukraine and Israel as both allies continue to fight into the new year. But there's some pushback against the president from his own party. At issue, according to some Democrats, is his administration sending new arms to Israel in a way that bypasses the normal congressional review process. This could lead to Congress splitting Israeli funding from the Ukraine foreign aid package. Senate Democratic leaders resisting this in the past. They say it will only complicate the must-pass package. Well, meantime, Republicans aren't planning to pass any international aid without changes at the southern border. The final month of the year bringing the most migrants in a single month ever. Governor Greg Abbott publishing those numbers showing how many migrants he's now bused from his state to big cities. What we have is clearly, uh, clearly an international and federal crisis that local governments are being asked to subsidize. And this is unsustainable. 
Republicans on Capitol Hill, including the new Speaker of the House, headed to the border this week for a first-hand look at the crisis before they return to Capitol Hill. And you're taking a live look in Washington, D.C. this morning, where there's still one more big issue lawmakers need to tackle before discussing an international aid package funding our own government. The countdown, it's on. The first funding deadline hitting in a couple of weeks. Congress not any closer to hammering out a top line spending figure for the fiscal year 2024 and talks getting more complicated. That's because the House GOP is now making new demands. According to Punchbowl News, they want to speed up IRS funding cuts, moving them from fiscal year 2025 to this year. These cuts were agreed to as part of the debt cliff deal. The first spending deadline is January 19th. The second is set for February 15th. Well, hopefully some help for workers heading into the new year. 22 states now have higher minimum wage. According to the National Employment Law Project, many businesses are at or above $15 an hour for 2024. That also includes about 40 cities and counties across the U.S. And Oregon and Nevada plus D.C. will increase wages wages later on this year on July 1st. The tide was moving in the direction that we need to really step it up as employers. But not everyone sees it that way. Nationally, some companies may see the new wage laws as a strain on their bottom line. They're saying, look, inflation is killing us. The, the cost of goods is going up. Add on top this wage increase. Several Pizza Hut franchises down in California say they're now laying off all of their staff delivery drivers. That's more than 1,200 jobs lost. Franchise owners say the layoffs are due to a discontinuation of their delivery services. And some good news, the box office kicking off the new year right. They appear to be recovering after slumping ticket sales since the start of the pandemic. Overall, theaters made $9 billion in ticket sales New Year's weekend. That improves on 2022's grosses, but still falls short about $2 billion from pre-pandemic norms. The film Wonka taking the number one spot. Maybe a good excuse to stay in today, but if you are yeah. venturing out, be ready for some fog. Yeah, we do have some fog out there this morning. Temperature is quite chilly out there yeah. too. Much of the valley sitting below freezing right now. And we are going to see some dry conditions over the next two days. We may see a shower or two out in eastern Oregon on Wednesday afternoon. But over the next two days, high pressure is likely going to keep most of the Treasure Valley dry. But on Friday, we are going to see a series of Pacific storms moving into the region. Now, this is going to bring a rain-snow mixture on Friday and possibly some snow showers on Saturday. Let's take a look at future cast because we'll start to see that inversion clear out as we head through the afternoon and we'll likely see some partly cloudy skies through this evening, but then we'll see a front arrive late tonight and into tomorrow morning. That'll bring us some mostly cloudy skies here in the valley. We'll likely see most of that precipitation sticking over in eastern Oregon throughout Wednesday morning and as we head into Wednesday afternoon, Mountain Home may see some showers, but most of the Treasure Valley should remain dry and then we'll see most of that precipitation move over into the Magic Valley where they're expecting some snow showers on Thursday, but as we're here in the Treasure Valley, We'll see those high temperatures in the low 40s through Friday, and we'll see that first Pacific storm arrive on Friday, bringing us a wintry mix of rain and snow. Now, we are going to see some cooling over the weekend. Those low temperatures will drop below freezing, which may cause some snow showers around the region on Saturday. High temperatures will drop down into the mid-30s on Sunday, and will drop right around freezing next Monday. Meanwhile, moving over to the mountains, they'll see those high temperatures in the mid-30s on both Wednesday and Thursday. By Friday, those highs should drop down into the low 30s, and they'll likely see some snow showers begin on Friday. Those snow showers Showers will continue throughout the weekend and we'll also see some cooling too. High temperatures will drop down to 28 degrees on Saturday and down into the mid 20s on Sunday. We'll see those highs dropping down all the way into the low 20s on Monday and take a look at that low temperature on Monday morning. Going to be a chilly 5 degrees over in the mountains. Thank you, Vasily. Fox 9 News and News Talk KBOY bringing you team traffic all morning long. And let's take a live look out there at the drive with Debbie McAllister this morning. Good morning on the eastbound lanes of the freeway from Caldwell to Boise. No slowdowns, no crashes. However, we do have a little bit of extra traffic on Garrity heading up to the freeway. Starts right about 39th Street. Karcher looks good. North side looks good as well. Meridian Road northbound to the freeway also looking good. The commute is going well. Chenden as well. Eastbound from Middleton Road into downtown Boise. Great time to leave and get into work. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Debbie McAllister. Thank you, Debbie. Some important things to keep in mind this morning when you start your day. And as you hop in the car, be sure to turn on News Talk 670 KBOI 
or 93.1 FM during your drive for even more team traffic updates. Coming up on Fox 9 News, say Happy New Year to these newborns. Join us in welcoming these Idaho New Year's babies. Oh, too cute. Plus, committing to a dry January, the impact cutting out alcohol can have on your health. Fox 9 News this morning. It's 725 on your Tuesday. Welcome back. The Boise and Meridian St. Luke's Hospital delivering two New Year's babies. Now officially at 1232 AM on January 1st, Nevaeh Lilly and Ella Rose were born and welcome to their two loving families. Now Lilly was born to Brittany Ballou and Josh Delane and Ella Rose was born to Ashley and Jasmine. Now at the start of each year, St. Luke's Children's Hospital gives a gift basket to the first baby born to celebrate the new year. Lots of people trying to have a healthier new year, and for some that means cutting back on alcohol. Medical reporter Liz Bonus shows us how some are celebrating a dry January. Hey there, everybody. There are lots of reasons to consider a dry January, which means you go the whole month without alcoholic beverages. But specialists at the Cleveland Clinic that provided this video say one of the best may be simply to drink less or drink less often. They say many of us don't realize how often and how many medical conditions are linked to alcohol. I tell patients all the time, uh, alcohol causes over 200 different uh, medical diseases. It's associated with 200 different medical diseases from, from obviously liver disease to li heart disease to different cancers to mental health issues. One other reason to consider dry January is that it can change your social habits and get you to consider perhaps some other activities that are really good for you. Removing the alcohol from the social setting, a lot of folks will come back and tell me that they actually have more meaningful conversations and they do other things than go to the bar with their friends and family. They'll go on walks, they'll go to the gym, they'll go play board games at home. Um, it's a really nice experiment to understand that you don't have to have alcohol to interact with people. Now, one thought on this, it is suggested this is a good option for people who want to cut down, but if you are truly struggling with heavy drinking or alcohol addiction, it's not suggested you go this month alone trying for a dry January. Finding support can make this journey so different and, of course, can make a big difference in long-term success. Guys? Coming up on Fox 9 News, major earthquakes shaking Japan on New Year's Day. A look at the damage and the lasting impact this event may have. Fox 9 News this morning. It's 7.30 on your Tuesday. Welcome back. Despite the GOP race for 2024 not even started yet, many seem to believe the battle may already be over. Now, one governor says he thinks it's clear which Republican presidential candidates will ultimately move forward. This is a two-person race, right? It's between Trump and Nikki Haley. Everyone understands that. He knows his voters who want to see Trump defeated are all coming over to Nikki Haley. Governor Chris Sununu referring to Chris Christie's efforts to stay on as a candidate. Meantime, Vivek Ramaswamy, Aza Hutchinson and Ron DeSantis also still in the race. Governor Sununu recently endorsing Nikki Haley for president. Well, meantime, Trump still having a strong lead in the polls. The first voting set to take place in the Iowa caucuses. That's coming up in about two weeks. Many Americans expecting a Trump versus Biden rematch, but campaigning this year could be complicated. President Biden beginning the year still facing a potential impeachment. That's if Republicans have their way, along with his son being criminally charged in federal tax cases. Hunter Biden is not, of course, is of course not running for office, but in presidential politics, optics can matter. And Donald Trump already twice impeached himself is embroiled in a series of legal and civil cases spanning from accusations of deceptive business practices to insurrection. Whether it is a court that determines he's unfit to hold office because he took up uh, force against our uh, Constitution or because the electorate throws him out, uh, I don't think it really matters if he's unfit to hold office. For Trump, 
the calendar crowded with court hearings. There's a scheduled court hearing for defamation claims the day after the Iowa caucus, a marketing scam trial the week after New Hampshire votes, the federal criminal trial surrounding efforts to overturn the 2020 election happening the day ahead of Super Tuesday, and much more taking place both before and after the Republican nominating convention. Meantime, the former president trying to get back on primary ballots in some states. The former president's legal team expected to appeal the decision that removed him from the 2024 primary ballots in both Colorado and Maine. That's expected to happen as soon as today. Now, Colorado's secretary of state saying she plans to follow the Supreme Court's decision on the matter. But of course, we'll await to see what the U.S. Supreme Court says. And of course, I will follow whatever order is in place throughout the election. Colorado's elections are the best in the nation, and we think we'll have a great election regardless of what happens. The decisions to take Trump off the ballot are based on the 14th Amendment, which says officials who have, quote, engaged in insurrection are disqualified from holding public office. Meantime, whoever does take the White House in 2024 already has quite a bit on their plate to deal with. The war in the Middle East impacting countries across the globe as efforts from rebels in Yemen impact a major trade route. White House officials say they're not trying to create a bigger conflict in the Middle East after the U.S. military recently shot down three rebel ships. According to U.S. Central Command, the Iranian-backed militant group fired at U.S. helicopters while attempting to board a container ship. The helicopters fired back in what officials are calling self-defense. The Houthis say they are targeting ships along the trade route in response to the war in Gaza, stoking fears that the war could develop into a larger regional conflict. But it comes as more international conflict seems to be popping up. South Korea's opposition leader has been stabbed in the neck. South Korean officials saying opposition party leader Lee May young Myung, pardon me, was stabbed during a visit to the city of Busan early this morning. He was talking to reporters when he was attacked. Police say the attacker approached Lee, saying he wanted to get an autograph before stabbing him in the neck. Lee was conscious after the attack and will undergo surgery. Police, they're investigating the motive behind the attack. Kim Jong-un saying his North Korean military should, quote, thoroughly annihilate the U.S. and South Korea if provoked. It comes after promising to boost his country's defense. The North Korean leader making more hostile comments as the U.S. and South Korea continue to expand military drills. And China's leader also making some troubling statements to start off the new year, saying in his New Year address, or New Year's address rather, reunification with Taiwan is, quote, inevitable. Still, Chinese leader Xi Jinping telling President Joe Biden, quote, there's no reason why the U.S. and China can't coexist. It's part of a New Year's Day letter commemorating a deal creating diplomatic ties back in 1979. That January 1st, the U.S. officially cut off diplomatic ties with Taiwan in favor of recognizing Beijing. Well, Iran's open to fresh talks regarding its nuclear program. That's what a spokesman for Iran's foreign ministry said in a press conference. But that could be a tall order given recent developments. One is the new UN nuclear watchdog report confirming the regime is increasing production of highly enriched uranium, reaching levels close to weapons grade. This while Iranian proxies continue to destabilize the Middle East following the October 7th attack on Israel, Iran denying seeking nuclear grade weapons. At least 48 people are dead after a powerful earthquake struck Japan on New Year's Day. Now experts warn dangerous aftershocks could last for months. They say the situation could get even worse before it gets any better, as Amy Kiley reports. The word going forward is to be cautious and, and be ready to evacuate again. The death toll is climbing and dozens are injured after yesterday's earthquake on Japan's west coast. Experts say the situation is still perilous. Overconfidence is one, one danger. It's almost impossible to predict exactly how many aftershocks they're going to be and when. For an earthquake of this size, um, about a magnitude 7.5, we would indeed expect the aftershock sequence to go on for days, weeks, even months. Those warnings come amid the continued search for people trapped in the rubble. The bodies are still being recovered from the rubble and the accident is not over. The good news is the immediate risk of tsunamis is over and 
there was a nuclear power plant there. It was shut down before the earthquake took place. That's a relief since a 2011 earthquake and tsunami caused a meltdown at the Fukushima nuclear plant. But it's a relief that could be short-lived. There is a small chance, um, but a non-zero chance, that we might actually see an earthquake larger than that initial shock. I'm Amy Kiley reporting. The new year bringing a lot of attention here to Idaho. Two high-profile murder trials set to happen sometime in 2024. The triple murder trial for Chad Daybell expected to begin in April. A judge ruling the court will live stream it. He's accused of killing his first wife, Tammy Daybell. He's also accused of killing Tylee Ryan and J.J. Vallow, the children of his current wife, Lori Vallow Daybell. We plan to cover the trial when it begins later this year. However, Chad's attorney has several motions that could cause the date to be delayed. Meantime, Lori Vallow Daybell already serving life here in Idaho without parole for those three murders. Now she's awaiting trial in Arizona. Mar in Maricopa County, she's accused of conspiring with her late brother to kill her former husband, Charles Vallow, and trying to kill her niece's then-husband, Brandon Bordeaux. Just last week, prosecutors asking for more time before bringing her to trial. That's because many of the same witnesses testifying in Chad's case will also be testifying for Lori's case. Turning to the other big trial expected to begin this year, Brian Koberger is accused of killing four University of Idaho students in November of 2022, but it's still unclear exactly when that trial will begin. Koberger's defense filing another motion to reconsider the original ruling to dismiss the indictment. That date has been set for the 26th of this month. This hearing is closed to the public. Following that will be another hearing with scheduling dates. The state of Idaho is filing a motion for Koberger's trial date scheduled for this summer. We will keep you updated with any new information as we get it. And switching gears, police in Kuna want to know if you recognize this truck. Police believe the people driving it vandalized Christmas decorations back on Saturday in the Mineral Springs neighborhood. They want to figure out who they are so the homeowners can recover their losses. If you have any idea, be sure to call CUNA police. Well, before we get to weather, we want to let you know about some new local businesses to help you start your new year off right. There's a new coffee shop. It's out in Meridian. Nazca Coffee Shop is located off Saguaro Hills Avenue. That's just east of Eagle Island. The Fred Meyer on Chindin. It's in the building where Bright Ice Coffee used to be. Now they serve coffee roasted from Haley Coffee Company. The business just opening last Friday. And if you have a sweet tooth, you may want to check out Flourish Bakery. That's out in Garden City, opening just a couple weeks ago. They make fresh macaroons, naked cakes, meaning no decorations, and cakes in a jar for a portable snack. Well, we're waking up to some patchy fog around the Treasure Valley this morning. A dense fog advisory will remain in effect through 11 o'clock, and we also have an air stagnation advisory that will remain in effect through 8 o'clock tomorrow morning. Let's take a live look at Bogus Basin right now, because you can see that those thick low clouds hanging over the region, and visibility is limited in some areas around the Treasure Valley. We have seen visibility improve here in Boise, however, they're still seeing a quarter mile of visibility over in Nampa, and they're seeing just over a third of a mile over in Mountain Home this morning. Now, along with this fog, we are going going to see some chilly conditions this morning. Temperatures as you head out the door are going to be in the upper 20s around 9 a.m. So we'll jump into the mid 30s around 11 o'clock, leading to a high today of 42 degrees in Boise, expected to arrive at around 3 p.m. So over the next few days, look for those morning clouds along with some patchy fog. We'll see mostly dry conditions through Thursday. We do have a low chance of seeing a few showers here in the valley tomorrow, but in general, most of that precipitation is going to stay over in eastern Oregon, and then it'll move across the Owyhees over into the Magic Valley later on in the day on Wednesday. Now, We'll see above average temperatures throughout the work week, but we'll see a cool down over the weekend as a series of Pacific storms move into the region. Now, as for your ski report, these are the base steps at these mountains 31 inches at Tamarack, 15 inches over at Brundage, and 17 inches at the base depth over at Bogus Basin. And then, as for your fishing game forecast, that morning peak passed at around 6 a.m. this morning, and our evening peak set to arrive at around 5:40 tonight. Now, as for high temperatures today, much of the valley will be in the low 40s. We'll see a high of 42 degrees in Boise, 41 going to be the high over in Emmett, Caldwell, and Nampa, and 44. Four, looking like the high over in Mountain Home. 40 going to be the high over in Ontario and moving up to the mountains. 41 in Idaho City. 39 going to be the high over in Sun Valley. And 34 looking like the high McCall. Thank you, Vasily. Fox 9 News and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. And as we take a live look out there at 741 this morning, let's check in on the traffic with Debbie McAllister. 
Good morning on the eastbound lanes of the freeway. We have some congested traffic that starts at 10 mile and continues on and off until you're almost to 5 mile. We have heavy traffic on Eagle Road southbound between Pine and the freeway. And we have some heavier traffic on Karcher heading over to the freeway from Middleton Road. Jendon's looking good eastbound from Middleton Road into downtown Boise. From the Newstalk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Debbie McAllister. Thank you, Debbie. And when you hop in the car and start your day, be sure to start it off with KBOI. That's on 670 AM or 93.1 FM, where you can tune in and get even more team traffic updates. Well, coming up on Fox 9 News, the FBI investigating a New Year's crash in New York. What witnesses say happened? Fox 9 News this morning. It's 746 on your Tuesday morning. Welcome back this morning. The FBI is investigating a fatal New Year's crash in Rochester, New York. Police say two vehicles collided and hit a crowd of people. Stephanie Joseph from our Sinclair sister station there explains just what happened. A deadly and fiery car crash on West Ridge Road, prompting a major police response early New Year's Day. Everybody kind of flooded towards the windows a little bit to see how close the crash actually was because it was only about 20 feet from the building. And uh, at the time when everybody was funneling out, the flames were probably still like 15 feet high. Rochester police say people were leaving a concert at the Kodak Center when the crash happened just before 1 a.m. Concert goers sheltering in place on the second floor of the venue. When the set had ended for Mo New Year's Eve at the Kodak Center, uh, everybody kind of just walked out towards the main lobby and all the security guards were kind of blocking some of the downstairs exits and funneling people up the stairs out the one side into the kind of concession area. Police say a Ford Expedition hit a Mitsubishi Outlander that was exiting a parking lot. ABC News confirming that Mitsubishi was an Uber. Two passengers died and the driver was taken to the hospital. The driver of the Ford suffering life-threatening injuries. When we did finally get outside and you saw the carnage of the cars and the one car burnt up and car pieces everywhere and it, it was surreal to think wow this happened right here and as we walked down into the hallway um, and going down the stairs the smell of gasoline was just so intense i i couldn't believe how strong it was those inside still struggling to understand how this could happen it was crazy to see that kind of fire that was happening out front and i feel bad for all of the families that were involved down in California, a Fresno family is asking for help after a drunk driver drove straight through their apartment the day before Christmas Eve. Take a look at this. An accused drunk driver crashed through a bedroom around 1 in the morning. Fam family members say the driver just narrowly missed a three-month-old baby. wall fell on me and my daughter, so I had to cover up and try to push it off. God had his hand over my family. And that, that's all really came down to. Even after the crash, the family says the driver and passengers inside tried to take off. Their important documents, clothes, and furniture all now destroyed. Right now, the family says they're just thankful that everyone is okay. Well, before we get to weather, we want to let you know what today that today is a special day. It's National Buffet Day. Yeah, you can hit a pause on your plans for eating healthier in the new year, at least for one more day. The buffet table itself originating from Sweden during the 16th century, but the buffet we know today began appearing in the 18th century. Then in 1939, the Swedes displaying a smorgasbord at the New York World Fair exhibition. It quickly gained popularity in the U.S. As far as the term buffet goes, that's actually a French word used to describe the type of sideboard the food was served from. Oh, all right, now our stomachs are all growling. Yeah. Gosh, I'm yeah. about to eat some breakfast soon. <laughs> I'm hungry right now. I mean, 
not confirming where you might see us three later today, <laughs> yeah, maybe the but <laughs> there's a good chance. Uh, maybe. <laughs> yeah, no, and if you're heading out the door this morning, just use some caution. It's a, still a little foggy out there. Yeah. yeah, still a little bit foggy. We're starting to see it clear up a little bit around Boise, but over in the lower valley right now, we are seeing some of that right now. We are seeing some, we are going to see some precipitation here in the valley later on next, this week. Now on Wednesday, we're starting to see that improve here. Or we're starting to see some more precipitation moving in on Wednesday. We do have a better chance of that, and we'll likely see some precipitation over the weekend too on both Friday on Friday morning we'll likely see some precipitation and then on Saturday there is a good chance of some snow showers and I have, am having a little bit of technical difficulty right now I'll send it back to Sarah and Ashley at the desk thank you Vasily Fox 9 News and News Talk KBOY bringing you team traffic all morning long. And as we take a live look out there one last time at 7.50 this Tuesday morning, let's get an update from Debbie McAllister. Good morning on the eastbound lanes of the freeway. We have some congested traffic starting right about Meridian Road. That continues on and off almost to five mile on the eastbound lanes. Then on Eagle Road northbound, some heavy traffic starting at Overland Road continuing up to Franklin. Garrity has a little bit of extra traffic after 39th heading up to Stam Lane. Same thing on north side. It's heavy before you get to 6th Street North. Other than that, things are looking pretty good. It's been a great commute. I don't think everyone went to work today. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Debbie McAllister. Thank you, Debbie. And when you hop in the car and start your day, be sure to start it off with some team traffic updates to stay in the loop. You can get those on News Talk 670 KBOI or 93.1 FM. Well, hey, coming up on Fox 9 News, sticking to that New Year's resolution, some tips on pushing through to 2025. Fox 9 News this morning. It's 754 on your Tuesday. Welcome back. New York City's 2024 celebration bringing on a massive cleanup job. Take a look. The streets in Times Square had around 100,000 pounds of litter from just New Year's Eve. It took 187 sanitary workers to pick up all the confetti, party hats and other items left behind. Yeah, just look at that. Well, there are about a million people in Times Square to help bring in the new year. For many people, the start of the new year means new goals, but research shows very few have success. National correspondent Janae Bowens shows us what you can do to achieve your New Year's resolutions. It seems like everybody's talking about what they want to accomplish in this new year. To reduce my reduce the amount of my visceral abdominal fat that I have. 60% of my income goes into savings. I want to improve my posture. I feel like I have very poor posture. I According to a poll from Forbes Health and one poll, getting in shape is the most popular New Year's resolution for 2024. However, according to The Ohio State University, only 9% of Americans who make resolutions complete them. 23% of people quit their resolution by the end of the first week. 43% quit by the end of January. Okay, I'm going to go to the gym every day, every day for an hour. No, you're not. Lee Richardson, the CEO of the Brain Performance Center, a behavioral health center, says people fail their goals because they create unrealistic expectations. So what I encourage people to do is say, OK, I'm going to go to the gym three times a week and maybe it's an hour, maybe it's 45 minutes. But whatever you want to accomplish, set goals around that. Make sure that they're measurable. Make sure that they're realistic and make sure that, that you can accomplish them. She says it also helps to have an accountability partner. Son, and there's nothing wrong with asking for help. There's nothing wrong with saying, can you check in with me every week to make sure I get this done? That push could be what's needed to accomplish your resolution. In Washington, I'm Janae Bowens. Well, there's a lot to look forward to this year here in Idaho. The first happening this Saturday. Mark your calendars. Make-A-Wish Idaho hosting its Polar Bear Plunge. It's taking place at Lucky Peak at 11 a.m. Registration beginning at 10 a.m. 
Make-A-Wish Idaho, hoping to raise around $66,000 this year. And there's even more in the coming months. In February, the McCall Winter Carnival taking place. The event running Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. That starts February 23rd. And in March, Tree Fort returning to downtown Boise. Then it's time to start thinking about the summer. The Idaho 4th of July Parade taking place in the front of the Idaho Capitol. Lots of fun things yeah. to look forward to. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining us for Fox 9 News. We'll see you again tomorrow at 7 a.m. for all your news and weather.